Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check, stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community by University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Now live, this is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of Illinois State University, it's time for Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Live from Duffy Bass Field in Normal, Illinois. It's the Illinois State Redbirds and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth in Normal. I'm John Leo. Our first midweek game on the road comes today at the end of March, uh, breaking up a nice homestand before welcoming Maryland to start Big Ten play this weekend. The Hawkeyes are back in the top 25, the only Big Ten team to be ranked coming in at 25th with a 19-3 record. The best start in program history. A chance to get to 21, 20 wins before conference play would certainly be a feather in the cap of Coach Rick Heller and his Hawkeyes. Today it's Illinois State from the Missouri Valley. They're 7 and 11 on the season. One final test before conference play begins this weekend. It's the Redbirds and the Hawkeyes. Illinois State and Iowa live from Duffy Bass Field in Normal with first pitch coming in a bit. Well, the Hawkeyes are fresh off a three game sweep over Western Michigan in Iowa City this weekend. A few highlights from that one. We'll start with game one took place on Friday. Hawks win it 9-3. Oh, one drives this one deep to left center. Get going. It is to the wall. It's down. Wilmus, he'll score. Huxdorf rounding second. He'll stop there. It's an RBI double. Kyle Huxdorf, another RBI for Huck. 3-2 to Riggi on the ground to first. It's gloved by the first baseman. He throws it home. It's a poor throw. Knocked down by the catcher. Seegers gets by him. Leaps over him. He touches home and he's safe. Ha-ha! What a an, play. An acrobatic play by Michael Seegers to jump over the tag attempt. And he touches home. Count it. Pitch from Geschel. Ooh. Peterson drives this to left. Get going, baby. It is gone. Ha-ha! Peterson, boom. A poor weather forecast on Sunday turned the weekend series into a, a two-day series. A doubleheader against Western Michigan took place on Saturday. Game one of the doubleheader, Hawks win 13-8. 1-2, lifts this in the air, deep to left center. Get going, baby. It is one hopping off the wall. One run is in. Make it two. Peterson's hot on Tello's tail. He's going to score. And the Hawks have the lead. 3-2, to two, a bases clearing double. Sam Honard, yes. A few Ooh. more hit by pitches. Anthony drives this deep to right. Get going, baby. It's gone. Ho -ho. Anthony gives the Hawkeyes the lead right back. Boom. First pitch to Seegers. Ooh. Down the left field line. It is a fair ball into the corner. One runs in. Make it two. Come on, Benny Wilmus. He's rounding third. Here comes the throw. Safe. Ho -ho. Seegers, yes. The Hawkeyes winning the series uh, by the time we got through game two of the weekend. Wrapped it up the sweep of Western Michigan by run ruling the Broncos 21 to six in seven. No balls, two strikes. Huxdorf drives this deep to right. Get going, baby. It is gone. He's Home run. He's got a hit now. There it is. Kyle Huxdorf. Boom. Hawks lead two nothing in the first. One two pitch to Tello. Base hit off the left, off the third baseman's glove. One run is in. Here comes Derigi. It's getting away from everybody. He's still rolling down into left field. And Tello's got another double that scores two. 1-1. One, one, base hit into left center field. That's down. Huxdorf scores. Here comes Sarsfield around third. Tello stops at third. And there is an RBI, a two RBI double. Braden Frazier from Wheatley. He'll try to do it again. The 1-2. Swing and a miss. Got him. Hawks win. 
21 to 6. Strikeout from Wheatley gets a couple in the inning, and that'll do it. Hawks win. By 15, they run rule the Broncos in game two of the doubleheader. It was a perfect three-game sweep for the Hawkeyes over Western Michigan. Iowa now 19-3, and three, a chance to get win number 20 this afternoon. It's Iowa and Illinois State. We'll be back right after this. Uh, coming up out of the break, we'll talk with Blake Borgart, the student voice of the Illinois State Redbirds following this break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. We all love a good win, catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right, even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say, do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. For award-winning claims and sales service, find an agent at shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this afternoon. It's Iowa and Illinois State from normal today. We're joined by the student voice of the Illinois State Redbirds on 103.3 WZND here in normal, Blake Borgart. Blake, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, so student radio realms, huh? How are you liking it so far? I'm a student radio guy myself back in the day. That's awesome to hear. I've been really enjoying it. Got to get my feet wet in all the different sports we have here, football, baseball, basketball, and volleyball as well. I'm just really enjoying it, and I, I look forward to hopefully making this into a career someday. Yeah, it's, it's a fun one, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, it's a dream. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We get one of the best seats in the house. We get to interact. It feels like we're part of the team, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. Getting to talk with some of the SIDs here before the game, you really feel like you know the players personally, even though you might not get to speak with them every single day. You've got some really good facilities here at Iowa, uh, at Illinois State, rather. The This is a really nice baseball park. Just look across the way there, the football stadium, basketball arena, really nice facilities here in Normal. Yeah, absolutely. SefQ, it hosts a lot of our different teams here, but obviously the baseball team, they've been getting some recent renovations out here. You can see out to the right side, they've got that new indoor field house where they can train during the winter. Obviously, the winters, as you know, out in Iowa and here in Illinois, they can be pretty brutal on you. Uh, so I just, the facilities are really, really great here, and it's great to see this athletic program continue to grow. Let's Let's talk about the Redbird baseball team a little bit. 7-11 uh, start to the season, a lot of time on the road too, just like us. Uh, just a general thought on how the season's gone at this point. You know, it's it's definitely hard to start out on the road with a lot of those road trips like that, but to see them competitive with teams like Arkansas where you're on the road uh, for multiple weeks at a time and against a ranked team like Arkansas was really impressive to see us keep on fighting there and it's great to see us finally coming home to be honest now, just to see them back home here because they're a completely different team here than when they're on the road and when they have that home crowd on their side. Uh, a couple other key matchups, you, you know, you played Nebraska, played Minnesota.
Minnesota, you didn't get the full series against them because of the cancellations. It's probably been pretty hard to get in a rhythm with the weather cancellations that, that Illinois State's experienced. It's definitely been difficult to get into a rhythm of it, but it, what's crazy is ISU still boasts the best pitcher in the MVC, Derek Salati. He's been named the National Pitcher of the Week, uh, I think just this past week, actually. He's got 43 strikeouts, leads the MVC wow. right now. He's looking great. Looks like he's found his rhythm. We just got to get there with the bats. Yeah, so, so the season outlook still looks okay, even though maybe a, a shaky started here. We have quite a few injuries uh, early in the season, but it looks like everybody's kind of back on track for the Redbirds. Yeah, I, definitely some early, some some healthy scratches is how I like to call them early on in this one. And you, it also helps you to see, you know, get to play around with that lineup, get a little bit of that flexibility, see what you got yeah. from some of these guys who are coming up, these sophomores and some true freshmen making their way into the lineup, guys like Shea Robinson. Uh, so it's been an interesting start to the season, but I'm happy to see them getting their feet under them and get a little bit of that stability. Blake Borgard on our pregame show from Normal, Illinois today. He's the student voice of the Illinois State Redbirds. Redbirds on 103.3 WZND. Okay, offensively though, uh, a lot of power. Get 20 home runs as a team this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, Daniel Pacella is definitely at the top of that list. He leads the team with seven home runs, and when you've got a guy like Ryan Cermak leaving last year, one of the best Redbird hitters that we've had in, in years at this point. Obviously, went to the Tampa Bay Rays, but that's a really big hole to fill in your lineup, but Pacella, I think he stepped into those shoes quite nicely for the time being. Who are some of the other standout players to watch for today? Well, Luke Chang, his bat's been a little bit cold uncharacteristically uh, cold up to this point, batting around 192, I believe, up to this point. Expect to see him to get hot now that we're back at home. Um, another person I'm looking for, Shaden Kubo. He's a name who I didn't hear a lot of last year, really. He was always, a, he's been a solid, you know, uh, third base, shortstop, second base combo guy, but he's really been getting his legs under him. And Adrian Flores, top of our uh, order right now as our designated hitter, he's batting around 375. He's looking really good. How about the pitching side of things for Illinois State? Uh, Sean's Nisco, he's had a rough start to the year, definitely. He's coming off a bit of a rougher year, but in 2021, he was all MVC, uh, so he was one of the bright young stars on this team, so hopefully, you know, we might get to see him uh, start to blossom again now that we're, again, back at home, but it's been a rough one for him, but Tyrell, uh, I believe it's Tyrell Chadwick, he was up to 97 yesterday, we were hearing on the radar gun, so he's a name to be looking out for today as well, if he gets out of the bullpen and makes his way into the lineup. Uh, before we let you go today, how, how do you see this game playing out? Do you see offensive fireworks or more of a pitcher's type of duel today? I'm hoping to see a bit of offensive fireworks. I want to see a bit of a barn burner here. Obviously, you know, you guys out in Iowa, you can drop 25 on any given night and make the score look like a football score, if we're being completely honest. Um, but I want to see those ISU bats get cracking again. This is only their third game at home of the season, so hopefully getting that home crown with them and getting that momentum going, that'll be a really big driving factor for that offense. All right, Blake, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me again. Blake Borgard, he's the student voice of the Illinois State Redbirds on W33WZND here in Normal, Illinois. All right, up next we'll talk with head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, as our pregame show continues right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at uihc.org. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. 
kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye baseball this evening. It's Iowa and Illinois State from Normal. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, uh, just a final thought on that series with Western Michigan. Um, I thought it went about as well as it could have for us. Um, there was a, you know, a few things on the pitching side that you would have liked to have seen gone better. Uh, we were able to overcome it and had some guys step up and and. and, and pick some guys up and then offensively you know the last time we talked before the game uh, on Saturday we were happy about the approach on Friday against a good arm and and that approach pretty much continued for the next you know uh, 18 innings in the doubleheader and I was really really happy with um, with how our hitters um, handled themselves on the weekend you know there wasn't a lot of chasing there was a lot of barrels and they were you know and there it was a it was a weekend where um, it wasn't a great day to hit either one of those days. And, um, you know, granted, um, Western kind of down in the pitching, uh, you know, once we got into the bullpen. But I thought our guys uh, kept a great approach and was, was solid all weekend. And another positive was we cleaned up a lot of free bases and uh, played good defense. 19-3, and three, Coach, best start in program history and also ranked in the top 25 again. Yeah, I mean, that's great to see. And it's a result of... All the stuff we talk about each time uh, we do this, and it's a result of our guys really focusing on the process and and, and really going out and getting better each day. Because if you think about it, um, uh, I mean, there's there's been a multitude of ways that we found ways to win games, and then on the other side, uh, I, I don't feel like that you know we've played our best baseball. I don't feel like you know we're just lighting it up. Uh, I feel like that we have a lot to work on. And, and, you know, quite frankly, I wish our pitching was in a little better spot as we head into conference play but uh it, you know it, it's nice uh it's nice to see us get uh, some recognition and the guys get some recognition but uh, at the end of the day uh, we want to be talking about the best finish in school history right right uh, last time we kind of talked about that you had mentioned all right we're not playing our best yet uh, but from that point, do you see the improvement or things getting better? We're just kind of out of time before well, conference play. They're getting better. I was just hoping. I was just hoping that our starting pitching on the weekend would really solidify, you know. And and, and it kind of has, you know, with with Langenberg on Sunday. He's done. He's done a really good job the last couple of times he's thrown and, and struggled a little in the Friday night spot. Brody has stepped up in the Friday night spot and, and solidified that role. The Saturday role is the one that's been a, a, a little. Uh, worrisome just trying to figure out what to do who to start how to go about that game you know um, you know Jared Simpson had been really good for us as, as you well know out of the bullpen and uh, gave him the start on Saturday and didn't have his best outing and uh, you know so we're kind of kind of debating this week on what to do with, with that with that Saturday start I think Jared showed us maybe his value for this team is is best served in the bullpen and keep him in that role that he's been comfortable with and been doing a good job and so uh, as we head into conference play you know, I was hoping we weren't having to debate that but um, you know we had a couple blips with a couple other relievers that maybe didn't throw as well as as they had been against uh, Western Michigan but I think uh, you know all being said we're in a pretty good place and the guys will keep keep pounding away and we've we've uh, how do I want to say I guess we, we always kind of break the season up into to, to three or four segments. You know, you got your preseason, um, all non-con, and then you, once you start conference, that kind of ends that portion of your season, and we're on the road a lot and all that, and you have to go through that, and we set some goals for that. We met all those. We head into conference play on Friday. You know, you wipe the slate clean, and it's 0-0 again, and um, you go after your conference your conference goals, and, and then you also have the, the, the midweek non-cons that uh, we would consider probably this one of them, you know, as we start that portion of, of – uh, of the season and then you got your postseason and so we're just uh moving on to uh, the conference portion of the season and everybody uh is in a good place but everybody knows that uh the end game's what we're we're focused on and that's that's only going to come if we continue to improve talking with coach rick heller on our pregame show from normal illinois today you, you mentioned this is the the non-conference midweek uh, road opener uh, what are the challenges with uh you know a day trip on the bus get in get out 
Well, I mean, it's it's it is what it is. You know, that's what it is. You gotta, you know, you're in the middle of a uh, a week when you're you're trying to get caught back up in class, and then you gotta you gotta hit the road and um, you know play a game, jump back in the bus, and get back home late, and then get back to school in the morning and get ready to go for the weekend. And um, you know, it's just it's just part of it. And um, you know, the good thing is is that you know Illinois State gives us a home and home. So each week, each year, they're gonna come come back up and. And, um, you know, traditionally a good program that um, can help us with the RPI in, in some years, and that's a good thing. Uh, do you think the, the way the season started with some of the long travel trips and whatnot make this kind of a, an, an easier trip, well, putting the game aside, you know, you the know, logistics? Maybe, maybe it's just different because, you know, all those, all those um, trips are flights, you know, and yeah. it's, uh, you know, a few times we do have to drive to Chicago, but... No, yeah, it is. It isn't a. It isn't a bad trip, and um, I haven't been to Duffy Bass Field in a while. Uh, you know, in my 14 years in the Missouri Valley, I've had a lot of, a lot of battles here at this field, and um, you know, it's changed a little bit, but it still looks looks good, and. Um, yeah, it's the first time uh, I've been down here in a while. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. When you were at Indiana State, what do you remember from Illinois State? Do they have the same type of team that they did back then? You know, what, what do we know about Illinois State? No, I've seen it come kind of full circle, you know. Um, when I first came into my first my first Missouri Valley Series when I was in Northern Iowa, um, I really had no clue what to expect, you know. I come from a Division three school, and um, we just did what we did, and, but, but really had no idea... Uh, as a reference point, you know what we were up against conference-wise, and and I remember um, looking at the stand, you know, the standings, and I think they were picked six that year. And I thought, okay, you know, this should be pretty good test for us. And we get down here and face uh, um, uh, Cots, Eckenstaller, and Foristic, and I think two of the three, if not all three, pitched in the big leagues, and they were picked six. I was like, oh boy, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and so anyway. You know, after that, um, you know, about halfway through my tenure at at uh, at UNI, um, or late, maybe even a little later than that, um, Mark Mark Kingston or Jim Brownlee was there, and uh, for a while, and his son uh, Tim still lives in town, stopped out to see us today, and and then uh, Mark Kingston uh, took over, and you know, Mark did a really good job and, and, and built the program up to a conference championship type team. And, uh, you know, Mark is now the head coach at South Carolina and uh, wow. did a really nice job here and uh, always had very talented teams and a lot of good players and uh, it's a good school and, uh, you know, facility-wise for, um, you know, the Valley, this is, you know, pretty solid across the board in all their facilities with basketball, football, and baseball, softball. So, yeah, it's uh, I had the conference tournament here. I was trying to remember if it was my last year. It was my last year at Indiana State, or my second to the last, but we had a conference tournament uh, here, and uh, they put turf on the infield, grass outfield, deep deep park, plays big usually, um, wind not blowing real hard today, and usually, you know, like our place, it's always blowing, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's for the fans listening, it, it's a back, it's, to me, it's a backwards field. Uh, most baseball fields, you know, face coming out from the southeast and this one goes the other way so the the cold wind blows out mm -hmm. here at um, illinois state and the warm wind blows in but we have a, a north wind blowing today but it's pretty light so a, a program with a lot of tradition a lot of good history what do you see from this year's team illinois state well i think they have a lot of talent and from talking you know with their staff they've had a They've kind of had a snake bit type year with injuries. I know when they played Nebraska, I think they had six starters out of the lineup, and and you know that's that's tough. And and I think when you look at the record, um, that's a, there's a big reason why. And uh, I think most of those guys are back. They were not like the season-ending type injuries. A lot of the soft tissue nagging type injuries. And, um, it sounds like that most of those guys are back and played this weekend uh, in their in their conference series, and they kind of feel like starting to get back into the flow. How are we going to attack them today? Uh, let's start quickly with the pitching situation. Well, we're going to start with Keaton Anthony um, and go from there. And um, you're going to see Kate Obermuller. You're going to see. I'm uh, really really happy with how. Chaz Wheatley uh, has been throwing lately. You know, Chaz is a guy that, that was really struggling in the indoor uh, with some things and used that time back at home. He didn't travel a lot, but he didn't he didn't pout, he didn't mope, he went went to work and um, 
he's been getting better all the time, and he's he looks he looks like he did this fall and uh, and, and last year when he was going good, and that's a good sign. And uh, we'll try to get uh, Llewellyn Henderson. Christofferson all back out there. All right, that sounds good. Uh, a couple of keys to victory to take down Illinois State today. Well, it, you know, anytime we do the the multiple pitcher, it's um, it's a situation where you hope they, they just limit the free bases and we play good defense behind them. And there's a lot of guys uh, that you can go to if somebody is struggling a little bit, but um, you don't want you don't want to put. Uh, the two walks ahead of the three-run homer, you know, and, and keep the homer to a solo, and you got a chance to fight back. And then let's hope our offense just keeps swinging it like we, uh, like we have been, because uh, we've been in a real good place. And that's one of the things you can't really game plan as much or have the prep that we have for a, a weekend series. And so, um, you, you, you know, unfortunately for us, we had an off day yesterday. The way the the NCAA works the schedule, you know, we had. We were off on Sunday, and then the guys got together on their own yesterday because we couldn't be with them. So we haven't actually had much of a chance to, to, to go over scouting report and all those things that we have to do. So that always worries me going into a Tuesday game yeah. when uh, we haven't had a lot of contact with the guys. But I'm hoping if they just stick with the plan that we had this weekend, we should be in good shape. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Let's win the day and take down Illinois State. All right, thanks a lot, John. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Normal, Illinois. Moments away from first pitch, it's Illinois State and Iowa. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Moments away from first pitch, Illinois State and Iowa live from normal Illinois. Before we get to starting lineups and batting orders, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. The Hawkeyes 19 and 3 on the season. Illinois State 7 and 11. The Hawks are ranked in five polls this week for the first time since 2015. Iowa ranked as high as 17 in one poll and 25th in the one that uh, is most commonly followed across the country. So, with that said, Iowa ranked 25th ahead of today's game with the 19 and 3 record, the best start in program history. Illinois State 7 and 11. They've got a few series wins, uh, one over Austin P, the other over Arkansas State. Illinois State has also got a couple of wins, one over Central Arkansas, Western Illinois and Belmont. Just getting ready for starting lineups and batting orders being announced on the field as we speak. Midweek game uh, before we get to conference play, crucial that Iowa takes care of business today to try to get to 20 and 3. Uh, on the season that, that would uh, continue the the hottest start in program history we we'll try to keep things uh, going before Maryland comes to town Maryland projected to win the Big Ten Iowa obviously with uh, trying to have something to to say about that by the time we uh, get to Dwayne Banks on Friday but first we got to take care of the Redbirds today let's step aside for the national anthem when we come back we'll have starting lineups and batting orders Iowa and Illinois State coming up right after this this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield after a cancer diagnosis it's natural to want to start treatment right away but first get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer I'm Dr. George Weiner, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. 
it can change your care and your life. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. All right, National Anthem is complete from Duffy Bass Field ahead of today's game. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Illinois State Redbirds. All right, time for today's starting lineups. We'll go first with the Hawkeyes batting order being the away team. The Hawks will hit first today. Michael Seegers, he'll lead things off. Kyle Huxdorf batting second. Brennan Derigi will bat, bat third for the Hawkeyes today. Keaton Anthony, he'll be on the mound doing the pitching for the Hawkeyes and he will bat fourth. Raider Tello batting fifth. In the sixth spot is Sam Peterson out there in left. Seven, eight, nine, Sam Honar, Gary Christensen, and Ben Wilmus. They'll be taking on left-handed pitcher for Illinois State, Sean Sinisco, making his fourth appearance, third start of the season. He has a zero and zero record with a 15.95 ERA. In the three appearances, he's just thrown seven in a third innings, given up 16 hits, 16 runs, 13 of which were earned. He's walked five, struck out nine, and uh, opponents are hitting 410 against him. So just based on those numbers with a, an ERA near 16, opponents hitting 410 against him. Iowa's probably licking their chops a little bit here, uh, thinking that they could... Score some runs, get some hits. The Hawks score nine runs a game. Illinois State gives up eight runs a game. So Iowa trying to jump early on Illinois State. Head coach of the Redbirds in his fifth season is Steve Holm. Head coach of the Hawkeyes in his 10th season is Rick Heller. This will be the 22nd meeting between these two teams. Illinois State has the series lead 13 to eight. First meeting was back in 1975. These teams met last year. Illinois State won 10 to 6. Michael Seegers is in the box. First pitch is a called strike at the knees from the left-handed hurler uh, for Illinois State. Umpires today, Sh Shane Cannon behind the plate. Michael McGloon down the first baseline. John Hastings over at third. A one pitch gets to the backstop, and it's one and one. It was low. Seegers lays off. Beautiful ballpark in normal illinois 330 down the line in left 375 in left center 400 in center 375 in right center and 330 down the right field line seegers fouls it off to the right side there's a large uh, batter's eye straight to center it is green dark green wall with red logos on the outfield wall counts one two to seegers he takes it on the inside corner called third strike michael's down for out Number one, Illinois State with white uniforms, white baseball pants. They've got an old-fashioned cardinal type of red bird logo over their heart. They wear red baseball caps in the field. The Hawks have black tops with gold script Iowa across the chest, gray baseball pants today. First pitch to Kyle Huxdorf, called strike, outside corner, it's 0-1. Nothing in one pitch on its way home. This is lined into the right center gap. Right fielder moves over, and he's got it for the second out of the inning. Two up, two down for Iowa in the first. Bring up Brennan DeRiggy. DeRiggy bats from the left side. First time we'll see a lefty on lefty matchup. Comes in the first inning. Hawks. Two outs in the inning. First pitch to DeRiggy is in there for a strike at the knees. It's 0 1. DeRiggy batting 387. One of the highest averages on the team. Counts 1 and 1 as the left handed pitch is low and outside. Illinois State won their last game over Belmont 
on Sunday, 11 to seven down in Nashville. One one pitch floats outside. It's two and one. Redbirds gave up eight runs a game. Two balls, two strikes now to Derigi on the inside corner. 169 strikeouts as a pitching staff. The 2 2 to Derigi. Swing and a miss. Got him. Low in the zone, and Brennan goes down on strikes. A couple of strikeouts in the inning for. Illinois State's Sean Sinisco, and the Hawks go down in order to start this one. We're back right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Iowa and Illinois State in a midweek game from normal Illinois this afternoon. Hawks go down in order in the top of the first. Bottom of the first, Illinois State coming to the box. They'll be led off by Shaden Kubo. He's their third baseman. Greg Nichols, Nichols bats second. Adrian Flores is their designated hitter batting third. And the cleanup spot is Judah Morris over there at first base. Dylan Swarmer is their catcher batting fifth. Daniel Pasella is in left batting sixth. Seven, eight, nine for the Redbirds. Luke Chang, Augie Rasmussen and J.T. Sokoloff. Pitcher for the Hawkeyes today, we'll get, into hit, get to him in a minute, it's Keaton Anthony, but to set the defense behind him, over at first is Brennan DeRiggi, at second is Sam Honar, the shortstop is Michael Seegers, and at the hot corner at third is Raider Tello. In the outfield, left to right, Peterson in left, Huxdorf in center, Wilmus is in right. Doing the catching today is Garrett Christensen, the midweek starter behind the plate. Doing the pitching for Iowa is Keaton Anthony, making his sixth appearance, third start of the season. Keaton is 2-0 and to this point with a 3.95 ERA, 13 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's given up 13 hits, seven runs, six of which were earned. Five walks, nine strikeouts for Anthony, opponents hitting just 250 against him. So Illinois State, after holding Iowa scoreless in the top half, they'll come to the plate in the bottom of the first. Anthony will work out of the windup for Shaden Kubo, leading things off. He's a right-handed hitter. First pitch, call and strike. Low and outside corner, good start for Keaton. Mentioned that the Hawkeyes were wearing black tops with gray baseball pants. Iowa going with white baseball caps with the black script I on the front panel, black bills for the Hawkeyes this evening. 0-1 pitch is fouled off, out of play to the right side. It'll be 0-2. Kubo, a, a strikeout candidate with 14 on the season. Anthony out of the windup, the 0-2. That floats outside for a ball. Talked with Coach Heller in pregame, and he said, all right, we'll give Keaton a run and then probably see some of Cade Obermuller get Cade back on track. So uh, a nice start from Keaton. Uh, before we get to Cade, could have the Hawks off and running. The one-two from Anthony, chopped foul to the left side. As a team, the Redbirds hit 248. Adrian Flores is their leading hitter, batting 375. We'll see him bat third for Illinois State in the inning. One-two pitch from Anthony, popped up on the infield. Honar will take a couple of steps forward. He'll reach up, and he's got it out number one. Good start for Anthony. Not too many pitches uh, in the at-bat. Here comes Greg Nichols. He's their second baseman, left-handed hitter. Nichols batting 276. He started in every Redbird game 
this season. Has the most at-bats at 76. He's got some home run power. He got four on the season. First pitch from Anthony. Breaking ball just outside, ball one. one pitch lined into left center. Huxdorf is on it. He'll catch it on the run in the gap. Two down. Nichols gave that one a ride. That was a good catch on the run by the Hawkeye center fielder, Huxdorf. Here is Adrian Flores. He's their best hitter by average, 375. He's only played in 12 of the 18 games so far. 15 of 40 on the season. He's got three extra base hits, two doubles, and a home run. To think about throwing some spinners to Flores. First pitch is just inside for a ball. Flores is a right-handed batter. A junior from Santa Cruz, California. Finds his way to the heart of America. Counts one and one with two down in the bottom of the first. Anthony's ready to wind up the pitch. Breaking ball just outside. Good snag by Christensen. It's two and one. Looking at uh, Illinois State's roster, they, they recruit from all over. A big base in California that come here to, uh, to Illinois to play baseball for the Redbirds. Three balls and a strike. That's the count to Flores, right-handed hitter. Anthony looks in for the sign. He's got it. The wind up the pitch. Fouled off the uh, off the umpire's mask. Knocks it off, and it'll be a full count. Flores this season has struck out just nine times through 12 games. He's choked up on the bat. Christensen flashes the signs. The 3-2 from Anthony. Fouled back to the screen. We'll do it again. Good at bat here between Flores and Keaton Anthony. Three balls, two strikes. Pitch from Anthony. Check swing. He went around. Keaton struck him out on a pitch on the inside part of the plate. And the first strikeout of the game for Keaton Anthony ends the first inning. We're scoreless here at Illinois State. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Keaton Anthony leads off the top of the second inning for the Hawkeyes. First pitch to him was a strike. Second one on its way home. Inside for a ball. One and one to Anthony. The, the pitcher today moved to the designated hitter spot when he comes out off the mound. Swinging for the fences there, just missing. That's one and two. 
Pretty impressed by Sinisco so far. The one two to Anthony, swing and a miss. Down goes Keaton to start the second. That's three strikeouts for Sinisco through facing just four Hawkeye batters. Look at uh, Sinisco's sort of scouting report from the pitching side of things. He, he doesn't really get to the 90s, the upper 80s. First pitch to Raider Tello is a breaking ball called strike. Is off speed mid to low 70s, but the fastball goes 85 to 88. 0 1 to Tello. Fouled right back to the screen. 0 and 2. Tries to just throw three pitches with a with a fastball slider and changeup, but he'll throw in a curveball every once in a while. 0-2 to Tello. Swing and a miss. Chased it outside of the zone. The Hawks have struck out four times in the first five batters faced. Already two down in the second. Sam Peterson will try to change the tune of the offensive effort to this point. Just feeling out Sinisco. He's a lefty, doing a nice job so far. First pitch to Peterson. That's low, ball one. One zero pitch. This is high at the eyes. It's two and zero. Sinisco stands at six foot five, two hundred thirty pounds. Counts three and zero now on the outside portion of the plate. Didn't get called a strike though. Sinisco, local kid from Geneva, Illinois. The three zero to Peterson. That's low and outside, but call the strike three and one. Two down in the inning. Scoreless game, Iowa and Illinois State. Hawks have not had a lot of success against the Redbirds lately. Lost three in a row to Illinois State. Peterson takes ball four in the dirt, and he's the first Iowa base runner. Comes in the bottom, uh, rather the top of the second. Last time the Hawkeyes won here was 2009. So 14 years ago. These teams play often, uh, but only three times in the past few years. Sam Honar, he's the batter, left-handed hitter. A lot of room in right center. We know like that Sam likes to send it out that way. Good lead at first from Peterson. They'll check on him. Sam will have to dive back in. He does so without issue. See how aggressive Iowa gets on the base pass, stealing a lot of bags so far this year. First pitch to Honar. Drives this deep to left center. It's carrying well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Sam Honar. Home run. Boom. 2 nothing. Hawks lead in the second. Opposite field. Honar goes to left center, and the free base on the walk to, to uh, Sam Peterson. Hawks make them pay, and there's some early run support for Keaton Anthony. That's the first hit of the game for the Hawkeyes, and it's Sam Honar's third home run of the season. All right. Hawks lead 2-0. Here's Garrett Christensen to try to keep it going. First pitch to Christensen is low for a ball. Ben Wilmis is on deck. Sinisco out of the windup. The 1 0 pitch is swung on and missed by Christensen in an evening the count 1 and 1. Garrig this year played in, has played in six games, making his fifth start for the Hawkeyes today with a 3.33 average. He's got three hits on the season, down in the count 1 and 2. Sinisco looks in for the sign. He's got it, the 1 2. That's low, two and two. Boy, just out of nowhere, the Hawks strike so quickly. They get a nice at bat from Sam Peterson to walk. And then Sam Honar follows up with a two-run shot to left center, giving Iowa the lead, two nothing. The two-two to Christensen. That's outside for a ball. Count is now full. Wilmus is on deck. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him with a nice changeup that was 
dropping low. Christensen went after it. Hawks strike first, courtesy of the two-run blast from Sam Honar. Iowa 2, Illinois State nothing. We're back for the bottom of the second right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. Iowa out to the early lead on Illinois State in the bottom of the second inning. 2 nothing. Hawks out in front. Iowa on a nine-game win streak, trying to get to double digits if they can take down Illinois State today. Big series with Maryland is looming. Friday afternoon, we'll start the series with the Terps. 3.30 p.m. scheduled first pitch. Iowa and Maryland on Friday afternoon. We'll play the Terps at 2 o'clock on Saturday and high noon on Sunday. All right, we're ready for the bottom of the second. Judah Morris will lead things off for the Redbirds. Morris is a 250 hitter, but he's just played in, in four games this season, so he's on his way back. First pitch from Anthony is up and in for a ball. Morris, a six foot three, 245 pound sophomore. 1 0 pitch from Anthony, chopped foul towards the Iowa dugout down the third baseline. Foul ball. Morris, also from California, one of the recruits to come in from out west. One ball, one strike pitch from Anthony. That's just low and outside, laid off of it. Two and one. Anthony going with a couple of change-ups. That's what the scouting report would suggest. This one's hit foul out of play to the right side. Two balls, two strikes to the cleanup hitter for Illinois State. Anthony had a strikeout to end the first. Looking for one here to start the second. The 2-2. Two -two. That's outside, ball three. Anthony frustrated with himself that he missed so badly on that one. Counts full. Important pitch here. You don't want to start with the leadoff walk. Make him earn it if he's going to get on, or else just strike him out, get him out for the first out. The 3-2 from Anthony. Just got a piece of it, fouled it back. A lot of room behind home plate. The backstop is all brick, too, uh, without a pad, and so uh, with the exception of right behind home plate. Uh, so any ball that Kind of ricochets off, could bounce hard off the brick wall. 3-2 from Anthony inside. Ball four, missed it. And the leadoff man is on for Illinois State in the second. Their first base runner comes with a walk. Right behind home plate and where the umpire stands, Illinois State, they've got a large, their, their largest logo, which is not just the Illinois State Redbird head, but the, the walking Reggie Redbird. That's a pretty cool logo. And, it, and it's it's pretty massive, and it spans all the way to the backstop, if you can picture that. Anthony has to go to the stretch for Dylan Swarmer. Outside corner called strike to start this at bat. Nothing and one is the count. Runner on first. Have to watch Swarmer can bunt. Tello might be anticipating it as he creeps forward, even with the bag at third. The 0-1 pitch. On the ground to the left side, Seegers grabs it. His only play is to second, where they get the lead runner. Good throw by Seegers to Honar at second, as Michael was on the run. 
to his right away from second base. Had to grab it, turn, throw, got him at second for out number one. So Morris is out at second. Swarmer now stands at first. And this is Daniel Pacella. Heard from heard about him in, in the pregame portion of our broadcast. Boomer bust type of hitter. He's either going to hit a home run or strike out. First pitch from Anthony. That's low. Good job by Christensen to go out there and pick that one. Pacella, a 236 hitter. He's got seven home runs on the season. He has 16 strikeouts near tops on the team. One ball, no strikes. Pitch inside, just missing, and it's 2-0. Looked good, but didn't get the call. Iowa leading Illinois State 2-0, bottom two. Anthony out of the stretch, short lead over there at first for Swarmer. Hitter count here for Pacella. Oh, he chased that one, low and in as Anthony spun him into the dirt. It's 2-1. and one. one out in the inning, get another one of those ground balls from Keaton to start a double play. You can see, based on this batter, Pacella, left-handed hitter, just got that home run swing to him. Two balls and a strike. The pitch from Anthony. This one's drilled deep center. Huxdorf going back, still running. He's at the track, and he leaps. He's got it. He caught it at the wall. Two down. Huxdorf got it at the wall. Ho-ho. Incredible play by Huxdorf. He was going back and back and back and back in center. He got to the track, and right when he was about to look up to watch it go, he leapt up, caught it, and then crashed into the wall. No advancement by the runner Swarmer at first, two down in the inning. Pacella gave that a ride, but didn't have enough to take it out to center at 400. Here's Luke Chang. There's shortstop. First pitch to him, called strike. Outside corner, nothing and one. Chang batting 175. Really good fielder, but has struggled this season, according to their SID. A one pitch is outside from Anthony. One ball, one strike with two outs in the bottom of the second. Keaton's pitch, just low and outside. Just to touch on Chang's fielding, he's got eight errors on the season with 56 chances. So fielding at 85%, which is just not like him, uh, based on who we talked to from Illinois State, trying to find his footing. And he's in the batter's box right now. 2-1 from Anthony. Hit on the ground to the right side. Honar's got it. He'll flip it to Derigi for the third out of the inning. Good job by the Hawkeye pitching staff with Keaton Anthony and the defense behind him to hold Illinois State after the Hawkeyes scored two in the top half of the inning. Nothing for the Redbirds in the bottom half. Hawks lead 2-0. We head to the third right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy.
Iowa leading Illinois State 2-0 as we get to the top of the third inning. We'd love to know where you're listening from today on the Hawkeye Radio Network, whether that's all the way out in Atlantic, you're following along from Fairfield, you're cheering on the Hawkeyes from Cedar Rapids, or you're repping the black and gold in Iowa City. We'd love to know where you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from today. 9-1-2, due up for Iowa in the third. Benny Wilmus will lead things off. Right-handed hitter, first pitch to Wilmus. Floats outside, ball one. Wilmus has seemingly solidified himself into the starting lineup as the 1-0 pitch is a called strike at the shins, 1-1. One one. Chase Mosley injured. Uh, out in right, and so Wilmus and Braden Frazier are sort of fighting for that right field spot. Both will play a significant time. Wilmus gets the start today. Two balls and a strike. Sinisco still the pitcher for the Redbirds. Wilmus swings over the top of the 2-1, just missed it, 2-2. Two and two. A little hot and cold from Sinisco, the 2-2. Wilmus missed it. Swings, couldn't catch it, and he's out number one in the third. And you're talking about Sinisco here. He struck out six Iowa batters. Iowa just has not gotten a, a beat on him yet. He's mixing his speeds well, hitting his spots also. But six strikeouts came into the game as this one's hit on the ground to short, fielded by Chang, throw over to first in time to get Seeger's two outs in the inning. Uh, Sinisco came into the game with nine strikeouts over seven innings, and he's got six through two and two-thirds today. I, I wouldn't say that Iowa's been chasing any pitches really out of the zone. They just have not timed up Sinisco yet, with the exception of Sam Honar, who has the only hit of the game for Iowa and a two-run homer to left center. Here's Huxdorf, squares to bunt, pulls it back, and the pitch is high and outside, ball one. Iowa leading 2-0, top three. Sinisco out of the windup. The tall lefty delivers. Kyle sends this foul and out of play over our heads, and it's one and one. One ball, one strike, pitch to Huxdorf. That's high, but called a strike, one and two. That one came in at the letters. If Kyle knows that that's going to be called a strike, he'll offer at it. The one, two on its way home. On the ground to the right side, scooped up by the second baseman. Accurate throw over to first and a one, two, three inning in the Hawkeye third. Iowa leading Illinois State 2 nothing. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Today is the day. After countless hours of research, cutting back expenses, and nine months of anxiously waiting for her, today is the day you finally bring home your new car. It's also the day to protect her with an auto policy from Shelter Insurance. Our policies are competitively priced and include new car replacement coverage if anything were to happen to your new baby. To find an agent near you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. The Hawkeyes leading the Redbirds 2-0, bottom of the third at Duffy Bass Field in Normal, Illinois. Hawkeye baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants, and more located just minutes south of Iowa City. Keaton Anthony back on the mound for the Hawkeyes in the third. He's been sharp so far. Retired Illinois State, 1-2-3 in the first. Walked the leadoff man in the second, and then set him down 1-2-3 after that. Keaton with just one strikeout as he's almost through the Illinois State 
line up the first time. It'll be eight, nine, and one. Augie Rasmussen, their center fielder, he's up first. Rasmussen is a stolen base threat, so we got to keep him off the base paths. He's got eight stolen bases on the season. Left-handed hitter, swings and misses at a first pitch, low and outside, and it's 0-1. Had three stolen bases in their 11-7 win over Belmont on Sunday. Counts one and one. On base percentage of just 345, a 250 hitter. He's played in every Illinois State game so far. One ball, one strike. Anthony out of the windup, the pitch. That's outside. Two balls, one strike. Does have some power with three doubles, three home runs. He does have a couple of triples, which you'd come to expect considering his speed. He's walked six times. He's been hit five, but he's even in the count now, two and two. Anthony keeps working him with the outside part of the plate. Important to get this batter out. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch from Keaton. That's just outside ball three. So he's really pounding the outer part of the plate. He's missed three times. He's connected twice. Big pitch to start off this inning. Walk the leadoff man in the second. Don't want to do that again in the third, especially with the speed of Rasmussen, as this is fouled back to the net. And we'll do it again at three and two. Anthony with just 31 pitches coming into the inning. Christensen will flash the signs to Anthony. The 3-2 feels it, deals it. Line drive into the gap in right center. This is trouble. Wilmis will cut it off. Rasmussen rounds first, heading for second. Here's the throw. It's late. And it's a double for Rasmussen to start off the third. His fourth double of the season. And Anthony gives up his first hit to Illinois State. Coming in the third. Next batter is JT Sokolov, right-handed hitter. Batting 200 on the season. He's started 10 games, played in just 13. And the scouting report on him, good speed. He also has a number of stolen bases with seven. A bunt opportunity here. He squares to bunt, pulls it back, and the breaking ball is just outside from Anthony. It's 1-0. So Sokolov looking like he's going to try to bunt Rasmussen over to third. So the corners are in for the Hawkeyes. Good lead at second. The 1-0 pitch from Anthony. Sokolov not squaring to bunt, and he takes the pitch inside ball two. Iowa's got some movement in the bullpen. Looks like Kate Obermuller's getting loose. Two balls, no strikes. Anthony looks down at the ground. He's got the sign, the pitch. That's in, called a strike on the inside corner, two and one. Sokolov had bent back like it was too far inside for him, and maybe it was, but it was called a strike. He had squared to bunt on the first pitch. The two one, he squares, pulls it back, called strike. High part of the plate, and Anthony's done a nice job to battle back. Counts two and two. Nobody out in the inning. Iowa leading 2 nothing in the bottom of the third. Tello backs up now at third. The pitch from Anthony. Got him! Inside corner with the slider. And another strikeout of the in, in the uh, game for Anthony, his second, and that's a big one. Got Sokolov looking. Sent it to the top of the order. Shaden Kubo. Kubo's their third baseman. Stockier build. Not what you'd be accustomed to seeing in the leadoff spot. Runner takes off for third. Throw down is a bit wide of Tello. He's able to grab it so it doesn't get down the line. But Rasmussen with a good jump, and he's got his ninth stolen base of the season. Gets from second to third, so it's like that bunt worked out for Illinois State, the one that they could not execute and get down. 
Counts nothing and one. Anthony will go back to the windup. Infield will be in for the Hawkeyes. 0-1 pitch. That's low. Christensen blocks it. Gets away from him for a moment. He's able to track it down. One ball, one strike, one out to the top of the order in Kubo. He grounded out, rather popped out to Honar in the first. Hawks up 2-0. Try to avoid any type of solid contact. Maybe work low and away. 1-1 from Keaton. Popped up. Foul territory. It's going to get out of play over to the right. Counts one and two. One ball, two strikes. The pitch from Anthony. Just outside. Christensen tried to frame it. A nice pitch from Anthony but just off the plate away good discipline by Kubo to not swing at that two balls two strikes one out in the inning Anthony's ready with the 2-2 two -two, feels it deals it check swing and it hit him on the hand and they're going to award him the first base and coach Heller is going to come out of the dugout and ask some questions to the home plate umpire as two on for Illinois State now. Pitch was up and in, a check swing. And the home plate umpire, Shane Cannon, says that it hit him. The umpires are going to talk about it. In the meantime, it would be runners on the corners with one out. So the umpires come together just to the left of the pitcher's mound, the third base side of it. Kubo reacted immediately. He got hit by that pitch. And I wonder if there's replayability at Illinois State today. Coach Heller's back out of the dugout again after the umpires have concluded their visit, their discussion. And looks like they're just going to leave it. And so it'll be runners on the corners. Coach Heller coming out a third time now to talk with the home plate umpire. And now the Redbird crowd starting to uh, chirp a little bit. And it looks like Iowa might be making a pitching change. Yeah, the Hawks are going to go to the bullpen after all that. All right, well, they're ready to bring in a new pitcher. Illinois State threatening in the third. Hawks lead 2-0. Runners on the corners for the Redbirds and one out in the inning. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Iowa leading Illinois State 2-0 in the bottom of the third. The Redbirds are threatening, however, with runners on the corners and one out. The Hawkeyes go to the bullpen in the third inning. Iowa bringing in Cade Obermuller, making his seventh appearance of the season. He's got a 1-0 record with a 4.15 ERA. Obermuller's thrown eight and two-thirds innings, given up three hits, four runs, four of which were earned. He's walked five, but he has struck out 17 batters 
Opponents are hitting only 111. The key for Cade is throwing strikes. He throws strikes. Nobody can really touch him. He's walked five. He's hit five. So uh, the, the accuracy in a pressure situation for Cade right here. Ground ball could get out of this one. A leadoff double for Rasmussen to start the inning, then a strikeout, and then a hit batter. Puts runners on first and third for Illinois State. Lefty on lefty matchup now, Nichols and Obermuller. Cade set the first pitch. That's outside, ball one. Obermuller, the freshman lefty. Hometown kid from Iowa City. Kind of a sidearm delivery, the 1 0. That's inside, ball two. Now, in a hitter's count for Nichols, who flied out to center back in the first. Two balls, no strikes. Obermuller taking his time, the pitch. That's a high strike, two and one. Give Obermuller a couple of starts this season. Hasn't uh, had a, a ton of success in the starter role, but out of the bullpen, he's been good. Time called from behind the mound, and they've said that the batter, Nichols, took too much time getting in the box. The count's two and two. So that's a free strike for Obermuller. Puts him in an advantageous position here. Two balls, two strikes now after the strike is called due to time. Kate is ready. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him. We'll take that for out number two. And that's a big second out of the inning now. Here's Adrian Flores, their DH. He struck out in the first. Got to anticipate that the corners will move back now for the Hawkeyes defensively, and they do. Rasmussen still there at third. Gary Christensen's going to have to be sharp with his throws back to the pitcher. Texas Tech stole home on us once in, in the series in Lubbock. Stealing home like that, so got to be sharp. Flores, the batter, first pitch from Obermuller outside, ball one. Runner on first is Kubo. One of our best against one of their best. One ball, no strikes, two outs in the third. Obermuller's ready, takes a deep breath. The pitch lined back to the screen in the on-deck circle, one and one. Good part of the order coming up for Iowa when we get to the fourth. Dorigi, Anthony, and Tello would like to get there with the lead still intact. The 1-1 one -one pitch from Obi. That's just high, ball two. Went with a slider that was just out of the zone. Flores coming into the game, hitting 375. Two doubles, one home run on the season. 2-1 pitch from Obi. That's high ball three. Two outs in the inning. Judah Morris is on deck. Obermuller looking in for the sign. Short lead at first. Rasmussen at third is creeping forward. The 3-1. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He gloves it. He flips it to Honar. Got him at second. Yes. And the Hawkeyes get out of trouble in the third. Great job, Kate Obermuller, to hold the Redbirds to nothing after they threatened with a couple of 
base runners in the inning. We head to the fourth. Hawks lead 2-0. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Big momentum play defensively. The Hawks get in the bottom of the third when Seegers fielded a hard ground ball at short and flipped it to Honar, kind of across his body to get the force out at second when Iowa had a little bit of danger on their hands. Hawks lead 2-0, trying to add to their lead now. We'll see Derigi, Anthony, and Tello do up in the Hawkeye fourth. First pitch to Derigi. Ripped to the right side. Second baseman bobbles it. Throw to first. Got him. One pitch, one out. Decent play by Nichols at second to, to stick with it. Illinois State's got a turf infield, but their outfield is grass, and Nichols had backed up into the grass to, to try to take that one in and stumbled a bit and bobbled it. Here's Keaton Anthony. He'll be the DH now after starting the game as the pitcher. First pitch to Keaton is inside for a ball. Anthony struck out in the second. The 1-0 pitch into the gap in left center field. Left fielder moving forward. He's got it. Caught it on the run for out number two. A sinking line drive off the bat of Anthony. Just kind of dive bombed at Pacella's ankles in left, and he sprinted forward and caught it. So now two outs in the fourth. Here's Raider Tello. He also struck out in the second. Sinisco dealing in the dirt. Ball one. Good crowd on hand here tonight at a beautiful facility. The, the middle portion of the stands, uh, red with nice seat backs, theater seats, bleachers uh, next to and behind the dugouts. It's kind of like a bowl seating here, our press box is attached 2-0 pitch right back up the middle base hit Raider Tello he's on with two outs a yeah, very nice uh, facility indoor press box and then just a little walkway in front of us where fans can walk back and forth and then down to their seats Let's say maybe a, a few hundred people here tonight 200 or so, relatively full. Here's Sam Peterson. This ball gets by the catcher. Tello is up to second. He'll round it hard after the catcher couldn't find it initially. And Raider will stop there at second for Sam Peterson, who's the batter. Peterson walked in the second and then was driven home on the home run from Honar. Runners in scoring position. Peterson, a 381 hitter. Iowa leading 2 0, top four at Illinois State. One ball, no strikes. Pitch to Petey. Mm, took it right down the middle. One and one. Peterson just daring Sinisco to throw that one again. Tello with a good lead at second with two outs. He'll be going on contact. The 1 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. A golf swing from Peterson trying to elevate it low in the zone. It was a strike either way, and it's one and two. Sinisco looks in for the sign, doesn't even check Tello at second. Here's one down the line and left. It is fair ball. 
to the wall. Tello's going to score. Petey with an RBI double. Hawks lead 3 0. Yes. Two out damage for Iowa once again in this fourth inning. They did the same in the second. When Anthony struck out, Tello struck out, then Peterson walked. Honar hit a bomb immediately after. The first two, Derigi and Anthony, go out, uh, go down in the fourth. Then Tello singles. Peterson doubles him home. Here's Honar with Iowa leading 3 0 in the fourth. Pitch to Sam. Mm, slices this one foul. Out of play to the left side into the busy highway that's just beyond the, the stadium seating over to the left. Honar homered in the second. And the 0-1 pitch to him. Mm, swing and a miss. Hard cut. Fouled it back into the catcher's glove. It's 0-2. Not too many hits for either team. The Hawks have three. Illinois State with one. But doing just enough as the 0-2 is on its way home to Honar. That is a breaking ball that did not break. Ball one. Peterson standing at second. Again, still big gap in right center. If Honar can get his hips turned and pull one into the gap, the 1-2 on its way home. Sam chops it foul to the right side, just on the outside of the bag. Honar, the Hawkeye second baseman, will stay alive. Honar is from Naperville, Illinois. Spent some time in state at Southern Illinois as a Saluki, then at Heartland Community College. The 1 2 to Honar. That's low. Ball two. Good eye on that one. Sam's chased that in games before, but has made the proper adjustment. Didn't go after that one. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Sinisco ready. The pitch to Honar. Golfed at and fouled to the left side. Great at bat here by Honar. Peterson, much like Tello was uh, just a moment ago. He'll be going on contact with two outs. If Sam can drive it between the white lines, the 2-2 chase the high heater. Swing and a miss for the third out of the inning. The Hawks get one run. Raider Tello, he scores on the Sam Peterson double. Hawks lead 3-0. We're back for the bottom of the fourth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at uihc.org. Iowa leading Illinois State 3 0 in the bottom of the fourth. Kate Obermuller back on the mound for the black and gold. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Missing my broadcast partner, John Evans, today. Stayed home in uh, the Iowa City area, feeling a bit under the weather. So, John, we're thinking of you. Hope you feel better soon. we got to get you back for that big home series with Maryland coming up. So we're sending our thoughts over to, to my great broadcast partner, John. We've got a doozy of a game through a few innings in normal Illinois so far. Hawks on top, 3-0. Got to hold the Redbirds down 
as long as we can. Here's Judah Morris to lead off the inning against Cade Obermuller. First pitch from the rookie on the ground to the left side. Charging it hard is Tello. On the run, throw is wide. Derigi dropped it. Derigi came off the bag to grab it, and then he was going to apply the tag on Morris. Everything had beat him, and so that was going to work, but Derigi dropped it before he could apply the tag. It'll be interesting to see how that's scored. It'll be an E5 on Tello on the inaccurate throw. So a free base there for Illinois State. Here's the catcher, Dylan Swarmer. He reached on a fielder's choice in the second. Obermuller taking his time. First pitch to Swarmer. Grounded foul to the left side, 0-1. Iowa 3, Illinois State 0 in the bottom of the fourth inning. Shadow's about to come into full effect here. The sun's setting behind us. So the press box is creeping from foul territory towards that right field line and the first baseline. Counts nothing and one. The pitch from Obi. Chopped, foul to the left side in the box. That was headed towards Tello over there at third so that Raider could have a do-over. It was really a tough play for Tello because he had to charge it so hard and then turn his feet to make a throw over to first, but it was down the line towards home plate, and Derigi couldn't, couldn't quite grab it. Obermuller has Swarmer down in the count, 0-2. Deep breath, the pitch. That's inside. It hit him. Oh, my. Swarmer didn't really react, but it got him somewhere. And so a couple of free bags for the Redbirds in their fourth inning. They've got two on with nobody out. This is a dangerous hitter in Pacella who took Keaton Anthony to the deepest part of the park in deep center where Huxdorf made an outstanding catch back in the second. Lefty on lefty matchup. Obermuller's ready. The pitch, that's high. Pops out of the mid of Christensen. He's able to grab it before it hits the ground. Ball one. Jacob Henderson getting loose down the left field line for the Hawkeyes in the bullpen. One ball, no strikes. Obermuller brings his glove to his waist, looks straight down, takes a deep breath, the 1 0. -oh. That's high, ball two. Pacella squatted it a bit. Obermuller trying to find the zone, just needs a little jolt of confidence here. And now time is called. Garrett Christensen will head out to the pitcher's mound to go have a chat with. The Hawkeye freshman. Freshman on freshman. Henderson getting loose. In the Iowa bullpen. He's been getting quite a bit of action lately. But for now, let's hope that Obermuller can just get out of this on his own. Two on for Illinois State. Nobody out. Bottom four. Iowa leading 3 nothing. Obermuller is ready for the 2-0 pitch to Pacella. Swing and a miss. Went after one that was high. Uh, off speed. Pacella missed it. 2-1 and one is the count. Two one pitch, waved at and missed. Got him again, off speed. This time on the outer portion of the plate. Two balls, two strikes. The, whatever Garrett Christensen said to Cade Obermuller, it's worked on these back-to-back -back pitches now. Finish the deal here, Cade. He's got the sign from Christensen. Two balls, two strikes. Cade feels it, deals it, popped it up left side, and this will get into the stands. We'll do it again at two and two. Lengthy at bat taking place. Obermuller against the Redbird left fielder, their six hitter. The 2 2 from Cade. Tap foul in the box. 
Pacella stays alive. Luke Chang is on deck. Chang is having a rough year in the batter's box. So get through Pacella and then see what we can see what we can do after that. Obermuller battling the sun a bit. He's on the mound in the sun. Christensen's in the shade at home. The 2-2 line drive down the right field line. This is trouble. It's into the corner. Wilmis will cut it off as the natural grass kills the ball before it gets to the corner. One run is in on the double from Pacella. Well, the error to start the inning and then the hit batter has made things interesting. Hawks leading 3-1, but two runners in scoring position now for the Redbirds and nobody out. Here is Luke Chang. So Morris scores. Swarmer's at third. Pacella is at second. Time will be called. Here comes Coach Heller. That'll do it for Kate Obermuller. Iowa in a bit of trouble in the bottom of the fourth inning. And we'll go to the bullpen to try to put out this fire. Iowa leading 3-1, but Illinois State has runners on second and third with nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. We're back after this pitching change break. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Iowa has to go to the bullpen once again, ending Kate Obermuller's day, but he's got the two runners that are on for Illinois State right now. The Hawkeyes will go with Jacob Henderson, making his eighth appearance for the black and gold. He's thrown just four innings on the season. Uh, hasn't given up any hits. He's given up one earned run, four walks, seven strikeouts, a couple of wild pitches. He's also hit a batter, so this is a crucial spot for Henderson, but this is sort of his role. He comes in when Iowa needs some outs, and boy, do they ever right now with a two-run lead on Illinois State in the fourth, but the Redbirds have two in scoring position and nobody out. Here's how the inning has gone so far. Judah Morris got on first base due to a, a throwing error by Raider Tello at third base. The next batter was Dylan Swarmer. He was hit by a pitch. And so they had runners on first and second for Daniel Pacella, who's a boomer bust type of hitter. And he pulled one hard down the right field line, a double that brought home Morris. And so now Pacella stands at second. Swarmer is at third. Big spot for Jacob Henderson out of relief for the Hawkeyes. Henderson's first opponent will be Luke Chang, right-handed hitter. First pitch to Chang, fouled in off the hands to the right side. Nothing and one is the count. The corners are in for the Hawkeyes. Middle infield playing back, try to get an out. Three runs on three hits for the Hawkeyes. Iowa's committed one error defensively. One run, two hits for the Redbirds. They've played clean baseball defensively. No balls in a strike. Henderson is ready. The pitch on its way home. Popped up, foul again to the right side. It's 0-2. Henderson's got a, a bit of a funky delivery and, and change-ups and almost like a sinker action on his fastball.
Nobody out in the inning. The 0-2 on its way home. Ground ball fouled in the box. Went straight down and then popped up and hit Chang before he could take off for first. Iowa's got to stay on their toes defensively so that Illinois State doesn't get a cheap run. Although with two strikes, probably not looking at a bunt or anything like that. The 0-2 rip just foul down the third baseline. Still no balls and two strikes. Christensen setting up a bit outside the pitch from Henderson. Popped up on the infield. Derigi will take a couple steps in over at first. He reaches up, and he's got it. Big first out of the inning. Chang just threw his hands at that one low and outside. Great pitch from Henderson, and there's one down. But they've got Augie Rasmussen up now, and he, he's buried in their order. Uh, not a great hitter by average, but... Uh, coming in at 250. He did double his first time up. And a double would tie the game. Iowa leading 3 1, bottom four. Henderson is ready for the first pitch to the Redbird center fielder. He swoops at this one and sends it foul. Nothing and one. Bullpen crowded for Iowa down the left field line. No balls, one strike, one out in the fourth. Pitch from Henderson, check swing. Did he go around? He did not. And it's one and one. Good job by Rasmussen. Strong wrists to not get through the zone. Tello playing even with the bag at third. Derigi at first is behind it. Middle infield playing back. 1-1 one, one from Henderson. Chopped to the right side. Derigi charges it hard. He's just going to flip it to Henderson, who's covering at first. A run scores on the back side, making the score 3-2, to two, Iowa with the lead. So the two free bases that Illinois State was given uh, to start off the inning, they have scored. Now time being called, and the umpires are coming together on the first base side of the mound. What could this be about? Not sure of this discussion. And that is broken up, and now the umpires go back to their original spots. Not sure what that was about. We'll have a pinch hitter for Illinois State right now. Get, get a number on him. Noah Rabin comes in, left-handed hitter. Henderson will wait for the first pitch to him. Illinois State with a couple of runs, making the score 3-2. First pitch to Rabin is a called strike on the outside corner. Rabin, a 244 hitter. He's played in 12 games. Four doubles on the season. The 0-1 pitch is popped up to Honar at second. Right to him. He's got it for the third out of the inning. So the two free bases come back to hurt Iowa in the fourth, the error and the hit batter. They both score, and Iowa clinging to a one-run lead. It's 3-2 to two as we head to the fifth. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Ooh, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. 
Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all High V Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores, where right now kids can eat free. Iowa leading 3-2 as we get to the fifth inning against Illinois State. The Redbirds with a couple of runs to take this a little bit closer. Hawks will try to get them right back with Gary Christensen leading off, followed by Ben Wilmus and then Michael Seegers. First pitch to Christensen is low for a ball. Sean Sinisco returning to the mound for Illinois State. And Christensen set a good eye to start this at bat. Two balls, no strikes. Christensen struck out in the second. He's all eyes to start off his at bat. Three balls, no strikes. Pitch from Sinisco, that's low again. Ball four, a four-pitch walk to start the Hawkeye fifth, and that's just what it takes to grab the momentum back if Ben Wilmus can do a job and advance Christensen somehow. Neither team hitting the ball very well today. Iowa a couple times through the order, batting three of 15. Illinois State, two of 15. Hawks have walked twice, struck out seven times. Illinois State with one walk, three strikeouts. First pitch to Wilmus is a call and strike on the low and inside corner, 0-1. Christensen at first, the 0-1 pitch to Wilmus, squares to bunt, pulls it back, and this drifts low for a ball. It's 1-1. One and one. Top of the order, Michael Seegers, the shortstop, is on deck. Find a way to move him over, uh, move Christensen over. Wilmus could maybe get on. 1-1, one, one, popped up, fouled out of play, 1-2. and two. Just missed it. Coach Heller flashing some signs down there at third. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Wilmus. Check swing, did not go. Got his hand started, and the curveball is low and in. Two and two. Christensen with a decent lead at first. The 2 2 called third strike. Outside corner. Wilmus is down on strikes. Shakes his head, doesn't think that deserved to be called a strike. On the outside corner, Wilmus is down on strikes. First out of the inning, the eighth strikeout for Sinisco. Time for Michael Seegers. First pitch to Michael, that's outside. Christensen takes off for second. The throw goes back to the pitcher. And so Christensen steals second. I don't think that was meant to happen, but we'll take it. The, the uh, catcher, Swarmer, never really popped up. He tried to throw it from his, from his position as catcher, and he threw it right back to the pitcher. The pitcher, Sinisco, grabbed it. Christensen was probably dead to rights there at second. Let's drive him in now. The first pitch to Seegers was a ball. And so Michael will stand in the box. He stares at the bat that he has positioned right in front of him. Now he brings it up to his shoulder. Sinisco is ready. So is Seegers, the 1-0. Michael hits this on the ground is short. Chang charges it hard, throw on the run. Two down in the inning.
Christensen still standing at second. Here's Kyle Huxdorf. Hux 0 for 2 today with the fly out to right and a ground out to second. You know, he steps in with a little bit of a, a chip on his shoulder to, to not have a hit yet. But Iowa with just three hits as a team. First pitch to Kyle. That falls low, ball one. How about an RBI right here, Kyle? 359 with runners on, 345 with them in scoring position, and he's got a good count right here. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs in the top of the fifth inning. Iowa leading 3-2 after giving Illinois State a couple of runs in the fourth. Two zero to Huxdorf. That's low again, below the knees. Ball three. Brennan Derigi, he's on deck for the Hawkeyes. Derigi also 0 for two today. Just a matter of time before the Hawkeye bats pick up. Already nearly halfway through this one. The three zero to Huxdorf. Swing and a miss. He had the green light on a high fastball. It was going to be called a strike. And Huck went for it, missed it. Three balls and a strike now. Sinisco is ready. Here comes the 3-1 to Huxdorf. That's called a strike at the knees. Huxdorf sent his bat to the on-deck circle. He was ready to walk. Home plate umpire Shane Cannon brings him back. And now the count's full. And now we've got a stoppage. And the umpires are coming together, and they call Kyle Huxdorf out due to time. That's going to end the inning. you got to be kidding me. Huxdorf tosses his bat because he thinks he's walked because Shane Cannon takes a little longer to call a strike. So Huxdorf tosses his bat to the on-deck circle to go walk, and then by the time he goes to pick it up and get back in the box... The third base umpire, John Hastings, said that it took him too much time, and that's an automatic strike, and therefore Huxdorf with two strikes is out. All righty then, we'll go to the bottom of the fifth, Iowa three, Illinois State two. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us, because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wisconsin Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. All right, bottom of the fifth inning from Normal, Illinois this evening. Iowa leading Illinois State 3-2. to two. Top of the order due up for the Redbirds in the fifth. It'll be Kubo, Nichols, and Flores. Jacob Henderson returning to the mound for the Hawkeyes. First pitch, hit him. Up and in, and the leadoff man is on. Hawkeyes need to regroup and refocus a bit here. The, the end of the top of the fifth inning was one that we've seen a few times in college baseball with the new clock rules. Hadn't happened to us yet. And so now the Hawks need to settle back in. Leading by one, here's Nichols. First pitch from Henderson, swing and a miss. That's more like it, Jacob, one and one. Uh, rather, 0 oh and one. Kubo's at first. Iowa leading Illinois State 3-2, bottom five. Now 
Nothing and one is far outside for a ball. Nichols today flied out to center, and he also struck out. So he's 0 for 2. He hasn't hit a ground ball yet. Could use one here. Let's hit one under the middle infield with Seegers and Honar. How about that? Runner takes off for a second. This is skied in the air to left. Peterson, drop step, turn, sprint, got it. The catch made for out number one. They get the ball quickly into the infield. The runner, Kubo, heads back to first. And so with one out in the inning, here's Adrian Flores. Struck out in the first, grounded out in the third. Some activity in the Iowa bullpen, just some loose stretching to this point. Nick Gatilla getting loose as well. First pitch from Henderson, that's high and outside for a ball. Henderson, a junior pitcher from Gilbert, Arizona. Checks on the runner at first, throws it over to DeRiggi softly. Iowa leading by one in the fifth. Next pitch from Henderson floats again. High and outside ball two. Hasn't been able to find the strike zone to Flores quite yet. Christensen setting up inside. Henderson missing inside. Ball three. Free bases are... are Haunting Iowa in the past couple of innings. Just one walk, but an error and a couple of hit batters. Today's game, the 3-0 is a called strike high and in, 3-1. and one. Good job to get back in it from Hendo. He's got that sinking action to a lot of his pitches. Got a little two-seam tail type of movement on it. Go low with it. Try to get a ground ball. Three balls and a strike. The pitch from Henderson. Fouled back to the screen, three and two. Big what a strikeout for Henderson B. Focus in on this one pitch. Christensen setting up right down the middle of the plate. Runner takes off. This is fouled softly into the stands to the right. We'll do it again at three and two. Kubo's been a bit active over there at first, like he might steal. But with a short lead, Henderson will throw one over just to keep him even closer. He's been running with a, a full count, but with just one out, it's not mandatory to, to get started early. He does have a couple of stolen bases on the season. How about a strike him out, throw him out? Three balls, two strikes. Pitch from Henderson. Strike three called. Got him on the up and in corner. Out number two, Flores, he's not pleased with the call, but he's down on strikes for the second out of the inning. And here comes Judah Morris now with two outs in the inning. Bottom of the fifth, Hawks up 3-2. Runner on first is Kubo. Morris reached on an error and scored in the last inning. Henderson ready, first pitch, fouled back into the pad. Nothing in one is a count. Morris is ready, so is Henderson. This is lifted in the air deep to right. Wilmis going back in front of the track. Ben's got it for the third out of the inning. That ball just died as it was lifted out to right field. The Hawks give up uh, one base runner, but that's it, holding the Redbirds scoreless in the fifth. We've played five in normal. Hawks lead 3-2. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our 
our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at bulkmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? (laughs) Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Top of the sixth inning at Duffy Bass Field, campus of the Illinois State University Redbirds. Hawks leading Illinois State 3-2. to two. And after a career day for uh, pitcher Sean Sinisco, his day is done after five. He struck out nine Hawkeyes. The Redbirds go to the bullpen with Jared Hart, making his seventh appearance with a 12.46 ERA. Does have a couple of saves, obviously not a save situation, but they throw him late in games. Eight and two-thirds innings pitched. He's given up 18 hits, 13 runs, 12 of which earned. He's walked seven. He has struck out 12, however, given up a lot of extra base hits. Five doubles, one triple, two home runs. Opponents are hitting 419 against him. So just the second highest opponent batting average. He is a lefty pitcher, and Iowa, uh, it's... You know, somewhat similar stat line to Sinisco. And Iowa didn't do that great against the Illinois State starter. And so they'll go with somebody similar in lefty Jared Hart. Hopefully Iowa has a bit better luck against this pitcher coming out of the bullpen in the sixth. 3-4-5 for the Hawkeyes. Derigi, Anthony, and Tello. Out of the stretch, the pitch to Derigi. That's low, ball one. How about Iowa gets a couple of free bases here or there? Two walks and three hits for Iowa today. 1-0 to Derigi. That's low again. Ball two. Hawkeyes are 19-3, winners of nine in a row. Derigi takes the 2-0 for a called strike at the knees. Two balls and a strike. Hart works quickly. He's already got the sign. The next pitch, 2-1. That's low and in, ball three. He's having a hard time finding the zone. He's walked seven batters in eight and two-thirds innings. How about number eight right here? The 3-1 to Derigi. Swing and a miss. Out in front of the changeup, full count now. Riggy ready. Here comes the 3 2. Chopper right back up the middle. Chang's got it at short. Hesitation, throw, out number one. Chang has had a bumpy start to the season defensively at short, and he's turned things around. He's had a nice day today. Here's Keaton Anthony. Anthony with a quiet day to this point, 0 for 2. First pitch, lifted in the air, high to the right side, getting into foul territory, get out of play. It is down but foul, and nobody could get to it as the first baseman and right fielder were giving chase. Long foul ball, nothing in one is a count. A one pitch, low and in to Anthony, ball one. 
Anthony started the day pitching for the Hawkeyes. Trying to bring his bat into the game now. The 1-1. Line drive over the shortstop's head. There's a base hit. Keaton Anthony. Yes. That could get things going for Iowa in the sixth. Hawks on top 3-2. Need a little energy here to finish this one off. Just the fourth hit of the game for the Hawkeyes. And it's been the bottom half of the order that's really carried the the water for the Hawks today because that was just the first hit of the top four hitters for Iowa this afternoon. Here's Raider Tello. He has one of the Hawkeye hits, swings and misses at the first pitch, 0-1. Tello singled, scored in the fourth. If he could find a gap somewhere and get Anthony moving like that. A one pitch. Raider takes this one. Called strike. Outside corner. Backdoor breaking ball. Good pitch there from Hart. It's 0-2. Sam Peterson's on deck. Sam Honar uh, will follow if any more batters get on for the Hawks in the inning. 0-2 to Tello. Line drive into the Illinois State dugout. Look out. Foul ball. We'll do it again at 0-2. Tello, a 351 hitter on base percentage of 422. Let's get both of those to go up right now. No balls, two strikes, one out, top of the sixth. Hawks up 3 2. Here's the pitch to Tello. Ground ball foul to the third base side. Anthony with a good lead at first, splitting the cut of the grass. Here comes the 0-2. That's low. Anthony reads the downward angle, but a good block by the catcher, Swarmer, and so Keaton can advance to second. He'll stay put for now. Love to see Tello to get his wheels moving. One ball, two strikes. Out of the stretch, Hart is ready. And the pitch. Tello skies it in the air to right. This will get out of play and go off the indoor batting facility down the right field line. Good at bat from Tello. Battling here for the Hawkeyes today. One ball, two strikes. Next pitch to Raider. That's too far outside. Good discipline not to chase after that one. Thrown in there pretty hard. That was... Nice pitch from Hart. Had a lot of velocity on it, but too far outside. Two balls, two strikes. Pitch to the Hawkeye third baseman. This is popped up. Shallow center. Center fielder coming forward. He's got it for out number two. As Keaton Anthony will have to go back to first base. So a long at bat, but not rewarded. And Raider is retired. Two down. Here comes Sam Peterson. As a pitcher, Hart can touch 90 with the fastball. Doesn't throw a curveball. Mostly fastball slider. His slider comes in at about 80 miles an hour, so 10 miles per hour difference. Throws a changeup every once in a while. Really relies on the slider with runners on base, and that's kind of the situation we're seeing right now with Keaton standing there at first. Two down in the inning. Pitch to Peterson. Just low and in. Seen that be called a strike today. Wasn't called a strike right there. One ball, no strikes to Peterson. The Hawkeye left fielder. He's been on both times today. A walk in the second, an RBI double in the fourth. Next pitch to him. That's low and outside. Ball two. Duo, Peterson with a check swing. Did he go? He did not. Ball three. That was close. Peterson really wanted to swing at that, but he didn't. And it's a good thing because that pitch was way outside. Three balls, no strikes. Honar, the Hawkeye second baseman, he stands on deck. Get Sam up with runners in scoring position. How would that be? 
3-0 pitch to Peterson. Swings at it and pops it up. In shallow center, Rasmussen comes forward. He's got it. So Peterson with a green light on 3-0. and And that'll do it for the top of the sixth. All right, Hawks lead 3-2. We'll be back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skoglin Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit thehotelatkirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information. Hawkeyes on top of the Redbirds in the bottom of the sixth inning by a score of 3-2. to two. I will go to the bullpen once again, this time bringing in Nick Gatilla. Haven't seen Nick in a while, making his eighth appearance now. Gatilla with a 3.86 ERA, nine in the third innings pitched, six hits, five runs, four of which are earned, six walks, 11 strikeouts for the Hawkeye left-handed pitcher. He's given up a triple and two home runs, but opponents hitting just 182 against him so good to see nick back out there and ready to roll he'll come in for jacob henderson who pitched two uh, innings gave up no hits no runs no walks he struck out one he did hit a batter faced seven did a nice job coming out of the hawkeye bullpen this afternoon so we'll look for nick gatilla to try and emulate that try and do the same as we're in the bottom of the sixth inning now at the Gamer at Home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Iowa trying to get their 20th win of the season if they can take down the Redbirds tonight, but Illinois State hanging tough. Iowa leading 3-2. Decent part of the order coming up for Illinois State right now with five, six, seven, Swarmer, Pacella, and Chang. Catillon's ready for the first pitch to Swarmer. Here it comes. That's high and outside, ball one. Illinois State, two of 18 today. We've drawn one walk, but we've hit him a couple of times. The 1-0 pitch, swung on and missed. Good pitch there from Catilla, and it's one and one. Gatilla can give us two good innings, and you can kind of go, you know, Llewellyn Christofferson to try to close this thing down. Swing and a miss on the 1-1. One -one. Hawkeye's got to find a way to get some more runs. We'll have 7, 8, 9 coming up in the seventh. 1-2 pitch is just high and outside for another ball. Gatilla trying to get him to chase that one. He didn't, so leading off the... Sixth, two balls, two strikes is the count. Pitch from Gatilla. Popped up, right center and shallow. Huxdorf comes together with Wilmus. Who's going to make the call? It's Wilmus. And on the run, makes the catch for the first out of the inning. One down, here's Daniel Pacella. He's dangerous. Pacella, the extra base leader for Illinois State. His first double of the season uh, back in the back in the fourth, but he's got seven home runs. First pitch from Gatilla is a called strike outside corner.
A one pitch, another one called strike on the outside corner. Scouting report on him. Go with the spinner, and they really want a lefty on lefty matchup, and that's what we've got right here. Gatilla being the lefty, Pacella a lefty. How about the spinner from Gatilla? Here comes the 0 2 that's in the dirt for a ball. One and two. He's a strikeout candidate as well. Struck out 16 times. Pops this one up in foul territory to the right side. Derigi giving chase near the coach's box. He's got it out number two. Anytime you can get Pacella out, uh, you, you know, you get him up with the bases empty. You know, the worst thing he can do is, is tie the game with one swing of the bat, but rather just get him out <laughs> and get two outs in the inning. Now bottom six. Hawks up 3-2. Here's Luke Chang. First pitch from Gatilla. Swing and a miss. Great start from Nick. Gatilla with an offset stance. He faces the Illinois State dugout down the first base side. As he begins his windup, the 0-1 is high. Ready with the 1-1, here it comes. That's low and in, ball two. Gatilla, much like the left side of the infield, he pulls his the, the cuffs of his baseball pants up to right below his knee. 2-1 goes to the backstop. And so Gatilla shows off his black socks with the three stripes, three horizontal stripes across the shin and calf. It's a good look for the Hawkeyes. They're black and gold uniforms today. Resemble the Pittsburgh Pirates a bit. Looking pretty sharp out there. The 3-1 from Gatilla is up and in for ball four. And so with two outs, Chang is on with the walk, and that'll bring up Rasmussen. Just the second walk of the day for Illinois State, so Iowa's done a good job in limiting those. They've given them a, a couple when it's come to hit batsmen. Just two hits for the Redbirds. Gatilla trying to get out of the sixth here. Iowa leading 3-2. Runner on first is Cheng. Here's Rasmussen, left-handed hitter. First pitch is high. Gatilla's missed high on a few in a row now. Time called. Here comes pitching coach Sean McGrath. He's going to go have a chat with Gatilla. He probably sees something mechanical to, to fix here. As Gatilla is just missing up in the zone quite a bit. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same day health care needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City and Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, it's been a tight game throughout. Iowa got two in the second, courtesy of the Sam Honar home run to left center. Added one in the fourth before Illinois State grabbed a couple of their own in that fourth inning. We've been 3-2 since then. Iowa's batters have been puzzled by the pitching staff of Illinois State to this point, batting just 422 with nine strikeouts. All right, the count is 1-0 and to Rasmussen. Next pitch, swing and a miss, one and one. Gatilla's settled it down there. Rasmussen doubled in the third. He grounded out to Derigi in the fourth, but that drove in the second Redbird run of the day. Gatilla looks in for the sign. He's got what he likes. Small lead at first. The one ball, one strike offering. Ground ball up the middle. Honar giving chase. Flips it to Seegers. Got him. And the force out at second. Will do it for the sixth inning. Great job by Nick Gatilla out of the Hawkeye bullpen. We head to the seventh. Iowa leading 3-2. Back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free 
every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Top of the seventh inning at Duffy Bass Field in Normal, Illinois. It's been a great baseball game to this point, largely in part to the fact that I was winning at 3-2. to two. <laughs> Got to get some insurance runs here, though. It'll be 7-8-9. Good table setters for the top of the order if we can piece a couple of hits together. Honar, Christensen, and Wilmus. These three, however, can do some damage themselves. Honar with a home run back in the second. He did strike out his last time up. Christensen and Wilmus trying to gain their footing against this Illinois State staff. The pitcher is Jared Hart for his second inning of work. He returns. First pitch to Honar is chopped on the ground to the right side. Couple of hops, grabbed by the second baseman, thrown to first. One pitch, one out. Garrett Christensen will be called back to the dugout. Looks like Iowa's going to make a change here. They're going with a pinch hitter. And Will Molfler will bat for the Hawkeyes. And he'll enter in the seventh as a pinch hitter. Pinch hitter for Iowa, number 42. Pinch hitter, number 42. Molfler just getting going in the season, turning from injury. Molfler appearing in just his second game, right-handed hitter, first pitch, he takes it downstairs for a ball. Molfler is 0 for 2 this year. One out in the seventh, the next pitch to Molfler, swing and a miss, a bit late on it, one and one. Braden Frazier, he's on deck, so he'll enter the game for Ben Wilmis in right. Hawks making a couple of substitutions late in this one. 1-1 one, one pitch from Hart. Molfler drives it to center. Center fielder Rasmussen going back. In front of the track, he'll reach up and he'll grab it for the second out of the inning. And we'll see Frazier now with two outs in the Hawkeye seventh. Frazier is appearing in his 16th game now with a 281 average. He's got 12 RBIs, four doubles, and a home run. He's on with nobody on, two out. First pitch slider called strike. Back door comes on in. Four ten on base percentage. Seegers is in the on deck circle. Try to get a two out rally going. 0 1 pitch to Frazier. Didn't swing at that one either. Called strike inside corner. Those are tough pitches from Hart. Good pitches. And now Frazier's got to protect with two strikes. The pause in the pitch. Chopper to third base. Grabbed there by Kubo. Throw across the diamond for the third out of the inning. Hawks go down one, two, three in the top of the seventh. Can't add any insurance. Got to hold them here. We'll stretch things out from Duffy Bass Field in normal. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Hawks up three, two. Back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch. Jake has soccer tonight and Emily has gymnastics. Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> With a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Don't let life get in the way of what's most important. Visit shelterinsurance.com to learn more. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump. 
soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Iowa leading Illinois State 3-2 in the bottom of the seventh. New Hawkeye pitcher is Luke Llewellyn, uh, rather Will Christofferson. Will Christofferson is the new pitcher. We'll get to him in just a minute. But first, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. All right, new pitcher for the Hawkeyes is Will Christofferson. I could have sworn it was Luke Llewellyn from my vantage point, but it's Christofferson. He's going to come in in the bottom of the seventh right now, making his 11th appearance. Will's got a 3.72 ERA, a 2-0 record. He does have a save. Nine and two-thirds innings pitched, giving up just three hits, four earned runs, six walks, and he struck out 20 batters. Teams are hitting .094 against him. Christofferson, uh, j just to be frank, hasn't been as sharp the past couple of outings, so we'll see if Will can get back on track facing the nine hitter. And this is Rabin. Looks like they've got a pinch hitter in this situation. They're going with Stanger as Christofferson's next pitch is on the inside corner, one and one. Let's get the correct name, Blake Stenger. He's into the game. In the bottom of the seventh, Hawks leading 3-2. Out of the windup, the 1-1 one, one pitch from Christo. There it is, called strike. He's got the slider working already. Slider dominant pitcher. Christofferson is ready with the 1-2. Here it comes. Popped up, foul territory. Derigi's going to give it a look. It's going to get out of play and hit off the top of the Illinois State dugout. Count remaining one and two. Sun setting behind us as the skyline of normal Illinois. The water tower over left center field. The football stadium over the right center field wall. That's still in a bit of the sunshine, but everything else is in the shadows. Two and two is the count. Cade Moss is in doing the catching. Braden Frazier's out and right. The 2-2 from Christofferson is outside, ball three. Cru uh, crucial point of the game right here. The 3-2 from Christofferson. Got him, slider, brought it in the front door and set him down. One down. Christofferson goes with that slider, usually on the outside corner, and gets opponents to chase it away, especially the right-handed hitters. But this one started at the front hip, broke in, buckled Stenger. He's down for out number one. Now the top of the order. Here's Kubo. Out of the windup, the first pitch to him. There's that slider right down the middle, nothing and one. Hawks leading 3-2, getting to be tense times. Here at Illinois State, nothing in one is the count. The pitch, there's the slider, but too far outside for a ball. Kubo today has been hit by two pitches. As Christofferson's 1-1 delivery is inside for a ball. Kubo popped up to Honar at second in the first and then was hit in the third, hit in the fifth. He comes in to a 2-1 count in the seventh. Pitch from Christofferson, slider outside. Check swing, did not go, ball three. Will's been a swing and miss pitcher uh, to this point, and Illinois State hasn't really swung it too many. Didn't swing at that one, but it's a called strike, three and two. Don't want to lull him into... Not swinging, got to keep throwing strikes. 
Here's the full count pitch from Christofferson. In on the hands and fouled off to the on-deck circle to the right. See if he goes with that inside slider again. Three balls, two strikes. Christofferson's got the sign. Here's the pitch. Just fouled off of Cade Moss's glove. And he'll stay alive. Long at bat here. Stenger had a seven pitch at bat to lead off the seventh. This one's getting up there too. The three two is low and outside, gets to the backstop as well. And so Kubo is on. Another free base earned by him, his third of the game. This one comes with a walk. That brings up the second baseman, Greg Nichols, 0 for 3 today. A couple of flyouts and sandwiched by a strikeout. He's a left-handed hitter, so Christofferson's got his work cut out for him with the slider. First pitch is fouled off in the box. Got it off his inside right foot. Mm. Nichols is going to limp that one off. That doesn't feel good. But Christofferson starts ahead on Nichols. <laughs> Bottom of the seventh inning, Iowa leading Illinois State 3-2. The Redbirds have a runner on first with one out. Nichols is good to go. Now he's back in the box. The 0-1 pitch from Christofferson is hit foul over Iowa's dugout into the stands. 0-2. Moss flashing the signs that he got from the dugout. 0-2 pitch from Christofferson. Swing and a miss. Got him. That slider had more vertical break than horizontal. And Nichols missed everything. Second strike out of the inning for Christofferson. Nichols having a tough day. Now 0 for 4. Here's Adrian Flores, right-handed hitter. He's their DH. He's got a couple of strikeouts today. Henderson had fooled him his last time up. Runner on first with two outs in the Redbirds seventh. Hawks are up by one. First pitch from Christofferson, swing and a miss. It's been interesting to watch these Illinois State hitters. They, they go back to the dugout and they talk to the guy in the on-deck circle about what they're seeing from Christofferson. It's just not a pleasant sight as a hitter having that spinner come at you. No balls in a strike. Here's the next pitch from Christofferson. That's low, ball one. Will's ready with the 1-1. One, one. That's just high. Ball two. Got him to swing and miss at the slider earlier. The 2-1 pitch. That one is a called strike on the low and inside corner. 2-2. Two and two, Christofferson trying to strike out all three outs in the inning. The 2-2 popped up, fouling out of play over to the right side. Over our heads, they'll do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Flores struggles with the inside fastball, but Christofferson just doesn't throw too many of those. The 2-2, swing and a miss, got him with a slider off the plate outside. He's now struck out three times today. Christo strikes out three in the inning. How about that? 
We go to the eighth inning. Iowa leading 3-2. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. John Leo in the broadcast booth at Duffy Bass Field in Normal, Illinois. We've reached the top of the eighth inning. Hawks lead 3-2. Need a couple of runs of insurance. You just feel like that could really be the backbreaker for the Redbirds. If Iowa can tack on a few runs in the top of the eighth inning. And it'll be the top of the order to try and accomplish that. Seegers, Huxdorf, and DeRiggy do up in the top of the eighth. Michael today, he's 0 for 3. How often do we say that? that Michael doesn't have a hit as we get to the late parts of the game. Third baseman is expecting a bunt. He's even with the bag. Michael squares the bunt, pulls it back. Oh, and a called strike at the letters. Nothing in one. Hart is out there for his third inning of work. The 0-1 to Seegers takes that one for another strike. Low and outside, 0-2. Hawks have just been puzzled by this Illinois State pitching today. A, a staff ERA of 7.27. Iowa's only got three runs so far. The 0-2 to Seegers, he laid off that one, and it dropped low in the dirt for a ball. Hawks with three runs on four hits. Illinois State, two runs, two hits. A lot of room in left center for Seegers if he could pull one over the shortstop's head. Hart's ready, the one-two. Inside called third strike. Seegers is shocked, and he's headed back to the dugout, first out of the inning. Iowa struck out ten times today. Michael just wasn't expecting an inside pitch there. He was kind of leaning forward towards the plate. It was caught off balance. Here's Huxdorf. He's also 0 for 3. First pitch to him. He drives this in the air to shallow left. The shortstop's going back. And Chang has got it. Two down in the Hawkeye eighth. Two quick outs to start the eighth. Here's DeRiggy. Iowa today with, with two outs. Batting 300, they've got three of their four hits have come with two outs. Try to get things started a little sooner, but almost out of time. Iowa leading 3-2. First pitch to DeRiggy is a called strike, sweeping across the zone. It's 0-1. Okay, first baseman is hitless today in three plate appearances. He's down in the count 0-2 right now. Hart is locked in. The 0-2 to DeRiggy. That's way outside. Ball one. DeRiggy waves and misses at the 1-2. Chased it outside of the zone. He is out number three. A couple of strikeouts in the inning. Hawks are going to have to continue to hold Illinois State. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Iowa three, Illinois State two. Back after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. 
To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. It'll be 4-5-6 due up for Illinois State in the bottom of the eighth. Hawks on top 3-2. Will Christofferson returning to the mound. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. All right, Hawks are hanging by a thread here, up 3-2. to two. Christofferson versus Morris. First pitch is up and in, ball one. Iowa with four hits in 28 at-bats. Illinois State, two hits in 24 at-bats. Swing and a miss on the 1-0. Nice job there by Christofferson to throw that by him. Christofferson walked one in his last inning and then struck out three. He's got Morris fooled right now, one and two, to start the eighth. Feel like Morris would chase that slider outside. What do you say, Will? The one, two. Mm, he laid off it. Two balls, two strikes. Swarmers on deck, Pacella to follow. And with Pacella really hitting the ball well today, you just want to stay away from him, especially when it comes with runners on. Two, two, hit right back up the middle, base hit. So Morris is on. In the eighth, that was just a slow roller right past Christofferson, but it was behind him by the time he had planted his leg after the delivery. He wasn't able to spin his glove behind him to stop it. They'll have a pinch runner here as Luke Lawrence will come in to run for Morris. Morris is not fleet of foot. He's a heavier set player. And so now Lawrence, let's see the stats on... Lawrence, Lawrence has two stolen bases on this season. I don't think that he's necessarily stealing, but just try to get into scoring position and is quicker than Morris. Here's Swarmer, first pitch to him is bunted down the first base side, foul. And so we'll have to send the runner back to first. This is a tough for any batter against Christofferson because Will's slider is tough to hit when you swing at it. Even bunting it can be difficult. Counts 0-1. Check on the runner at first. Lawrence is back in there safely. Hawks lead 3-2, bottom of the eighth. Counts nothing and one. Christofferson set the pitch, squares to bunt, pulls it back, didn't get the call on the inside corner. It's one and one. Basel is on deck. Christofferson ready with the one one. Here it comes, squaring to bunt. Here it is, right back to Christofferson. Throw, nobody's covering first base. Runners on first and second for Illinois State. What happened there? Nobody covering first on a bunt where Swarmer was trying to give himself up. And so that'll be considered a hit. Two on for Illinois State, and here's Pacella. Mm. Nobody out.
Derigi came charging that one. Honar wasn't there to cover. Not sure if that was a situation where Derigi should have stayed at first or if Honar should have been over there covering. Either way, a mental miscue by the Hawkeyes gives Illinois State a lot of life now. Iowa leading 3-2 in the bottom of the eighth. Runners on first and second. Nobody out, and here's the power hitter for Illinois State. Don't hang one here, Will. Pacella with an RBI double in the fourth. He got out in the second and the sixth. First pitch from Christofferson. Swing and a base hit in the right. Weekly hit. Frazier charges it. He'll pick it up. The bases will be loaded for Illinois State. Nobody out in the inning. Three singles in a row. And the Hawks are on their heels. Bottom third of the order coming up. It's Chang right now. We'll have a stoppage. Here comes Coach Heller. He's coming out of the dugout. And Coach is jogging to the mound. I don't think we're going to have a change quite yet. He's just talking to Will Christofferson. We'll see if Iowa goes to the bullpen. Usually when Coach Heller comes out, it is a move to the pen, but we don't see that yet. He's having a discussion. He's going to leave it in Will Christofferson's hands. All right. Iowa leading 3-2. Bases loaded for Illinois State and nobody out. Luke Chang is the batter. He's 0 for 2 today. He walked his last time up. Christofferson is ready. First pitch. Outside corner called strike. Infield is in for the black and gold. They're going to try to cut down the runner at home if there's a ground ball hit right to one of them. Now the middle infield will go back to double play depth. Mm. Iowa up by one. Bases loaded. Pitch. Chang squares to bunt, pulls it back. They're going to appeal down to first. Did not go. Runner at third was Lawrence, and he was a third of the way down the line. Moss thought about throwing it down to third, but would have been a risky throw. One ball, one strike. Christofferson looks in for the sign. He's got it. Here's the pitch. Check swing didn't go, and it's just outside ball two. Tension is rising, the 2-1. Outside again, ball three. Mm, mm, mm. And no place to put him, Will. Three balls and a strike, nobody out. Bases loaded. Illinois State can tie it with one, take the lead with anything more than that. The 3-1 from Christofferson inside, ball four. And we are tied. Luke Llewellyn's getting warm in the bullpen. Got to think that Louie's coming in any second now. I'm going to keep it with Christofferson for now. Nope, they're not. Here comes Coach Heller. That'll do it now. Coach is headed to the mound. We'll have a pitching change. Base is still loaded for Illinois State with nobody out. Iowa and Illinois State tied at three. We'll take a pitching change break. We'll get you the stats on Luke Llewellyn when we come back. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oakmall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. 
And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Well, Luke Llewellyn has to come into the game in a real tough spot now. Bases loaded for Illinois State and nobody out. We're in a tie ball game and it's in the bottom of the eighth as Illinois State's mounted a bit of a comeback late in this one. Pitching stats for Luke Llewellyn making his ninth appearance with a 2.45 ERA. He's got a 1-0 record, 11 innings pitched, allowed six hits, three earned runs. He's walked seven, struck out 17. Given up a couple extra base hits, but for starters, just got to throw strikes and, and hope for a, a ground ball. It's something, something to help help the cause here because Illinois State is in business. They've got 8, 9, and 1 basically due up. Unless there's a, a ground ball double play situation, Augie Rasmussen will get the first look at Llewellyn, the Hawkeye right-handed pitcher. Uh, Llewellyn from Urbandale. All right. Iowa has not done enough offensively to separate themselves from Illinois State, and now the Redbirds are trying to take the lead in the eighth. Iowa in big time trouble. Infield is in. Three consecutive singles and then a walk for Illinois State. That's how they've got their run in the inning. Bases are loaded, nobody out. Llewellyn is ready, first pitch to Rasmussen. Breaking ball called strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Well, and a tall right-handed pitcher for the Hawkeyes. He comes set with the 0-1. The pitch fouled off to the left side, and it's 0-2. All right, Louie, come on, bring it. Moss flashing the signs, the 0-2 from Llewellyn. Outside, that's all right, ball one. Here's the one-two pitch. Ground ball to Seegers, it's short. He throws it home, it is accurate. Moss picked it out at home, yes! Got him! What a play right there by Cade Moss at the catcher position. The ground ball to Seegers. And the throw was up the line towards third, and it was a strong stretch from Cade Moss to keep his foot on the bag. One down, bases still loaded. For Illinois State, tie ball game. And Illinois State will send a pinch hitter into the box. This will be Connor Olson, a senior. Left-handed hitter. He comes in in crunch time. Tie ball game, bottom eight. Bases loaded for the Redbirds and one out. Llewellyn got the ground ball a moment ago. Another one here could turn two. First pitch to Olsen. That's low, ball one. Brief time called from Cade Moss behind the plate. Vocal crowd from Illinois State starting to chirp the Hawkeyes. Stay focused here, gentlemen. One ball and a strike with one out in the eighth. Bases loaded. The pitch from Llewellyn. That's a called strike on the inside half. One and one. Llewellyn takes a deep breath on the mound. Moss setting up outside. The 1-1 one, one just off the plate. Outside 2-1. and one.
Two balls and a strike. Llewellyn steps off the mound. He took too much time. And so now, is that correct? It's three and one. Three balls and a strike because Llewellyn took more than 20 seconds. Now he has to bring it home with a strike so he doesn't walk in or on. The three one. Ground ball up the middle off Llewellyn's glove. Seegers picks it up, throw to first in time. Illinois State's got the lead four to three. Just hit a bit too sharply back to Llewellyn. He, he made a great effort on it, but that's a really tough play. Seegers gets the out, two down in the inning. Illinois State leading 4-3. Runners on second and third. Here's top of the order, Shaden Kubo. Llewellyn's pitch. That's in the dirt, blocked nicely by Moss. Mm. I was going to have Anthony Tello and Peterson to try to answer and stay alive when we get to the top of the ninth. Pitch from Llewellyn. That's low, ball two. Kubo swings at the 2-0 and sends it straight back into the protective net. 2-1. Good challenge pitch there from Llewellyn. Mm -mm -mm. Two one, right down the middle. Call and strike two and two. Llewellyn one strike away from getting out of the jam, but still two runners in scoring position with two outs for Illinois State. Find a way here, Luke. 2-2 pitch, that's low, gets away from Moss to the backstop. And the Redbirds score another. That'll be a pass ball. Illinois State has scored three in the eighth and it's 5-3. Now the 3-2 from Llewellyn is inside for ball four. The inning continues for Illinois State. Oh, brother. Redbirds with a 5-3 lead. Two outs in the eighth, and still the inning continues with runners on the corners for Greg Nichols, the two-hitter. Boy, that pitch was close. Hmm. Llewellyn's got to start all over now with Nichols. First pitch is a call and strike. Low in the zone, 0 and 1. Well, I was going to have to find their magic in their in their bats. Certainly capable, Anthony Tello and Peterson do up in the ninth. As it stands right now, Iowa trailing by two, the 0-1 pitch from Llewellyn. Ground ball to DeRiggi at first. He knocks it down. He'll take it himself for the third out, and Illinois State has taken the lead. Redbirds five, Hawkeyes three. We go to the ninth, and all of a sudden, Iowa passed their heels. They're not on them anymore. They're knocked down, down by two. Got to find a way to score some runs to keep this one going. Their last chance coming up in the ninth. We're back after this. This is Honkai Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. 
Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. All right, top of the ninth inning, and just like that, it's Iowa's last chance. Trailing Illinois State now by two after giving up three runs in the bottom of the eighth. And the Redbirds will go with Elijah Dale out of their bullpen. I try to close this thing down. He's got one save on the season, a one and two record in five appearances, a 4.91 ERA, 14 and two thirds innings pitched. He's given up 15 hits, nine runs, eight earned runs, three walks. He struck out 21. So he throws a lot of strikes. Keaton Anthony will lead things off, try to get things going for the Hawkeyes, trailing by two in the ninth. Dale's a right-handed pitcher. And the first pitch to Anthony. Inside corner called strike. Iowa 19-3, ranked in the top 25. Illinois State 7-11. Owen pitch to Anthony, swing and a miss. Anthony's got to protect here with two strikes. The pitch, that's just off the plate away. Raider Tello's on deck. Got to find a way to get to Raider, hopefully with Keaton on base somewhere. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out in the top of the ninth. Iowa trailing 5-3. The pitch, Anthony pops this one up down the right field line, tailing into foul territory, and it will be foul. We'll do it again at 1-2. and two. Anthony singled in the sixth, the one, two, on the ground to the left side, shortstop will backhand it, throw on the run is not in time, Anthony beat it out. Ho, 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 that was close at first. What an incredible play by Chang from deep in the hole between short and third. He picked it up and threw it falling away. Good stretch at first, but Anthony beats it out for a single. Now it's Raider Tello's turn. Tying run at the plate. Just the fifth hit of the game for the Hawkeyes. First pitch to Tello. Outside corner, breaking ball, called strike. Not going to do much with that one. That's all right, Raider. Tello's one for three today. Singled and scored in the fourth. The 0-1. Ground ball to short. This is trouble. Fielded on a hop. The only play is over to first. And they get him out there. So Tello is out number one. Anthony's okay there at second. Anthony's in scoring position. One out in the ninth. Hawks down by two. Here's Peterson. A capable hitter. He walked and scored in the second. He RBI hit an RBI double in the fourth. Flied out to center his last time up in the sixth. First pitch to Petey. That's low and in the dirt. Anthony got a good read on it, but can't get to third. Good, good uh, effort by Swarmer there to keep Anthony at second. One ball, no strikes. Pitch to Peterson. Swing and a miss. Just missed it. Wow, Sam was trying to hit that to the water tower in left center. Peterson in the box, the pitch, breaking ball, called strike. Right on the inside corner, one and two now. The one, two, Peterson taps it foul, staying alive. Dale's mainly a, a sinker slider type of guy, likes to throw it down the middle, but with enough movement on it that gets a lot of swings and misses. 
Hang with him, Petey. One ball, two strikes. Dale's ready, the pitch. Just outside, ball two. Good discipline by Peterson. Lays off of that one. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Hey, swung at that one and missed it. That one was low and outside. Sam could not lay off. Two down. Hawks are down to their final out. Here's Sam Honar. Honar hit the home run in the second to get the scoring started for the Hawkeyes. Man, we could use one of those right now to tie it up. Iowa down 5-3, down to their final out. First pitch to Sam. Check swing. Did he go around? No. Was just off the plate inside. 1-0 pitch to Honar. That's inside again, ball two. Anthony standing on second with two outs in the top of the ninth. Iowa down 5-3. Here's the pitch to Honar. Ground ball off the pitcher right to the first baseman. He'll touch the bag, out number three. Unreal. Honar crushed that ball off the pitcher's foot. It went right to the first baseman who touched the bag to end the game. Hawks let one get away today. Illinois State wins it 5-3. to three. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now, kids can eat free. Now the Hawkeyes let one slip away today in normal Illinois. The Redbirds score three in the bottom of the eighth, and they stun the Hawkeyes five to three. Iowa dropping now to 19 and four on the season. Their win streak stops at nine. Illinois State now eight and 11, and the Hawkeyes will have to regroup as we get set for the big home series with Maryland coming up to open conference play. Just could not get it done today. Could not get the insurance runs. Uh, at, at any point during that game, got two runs in the second, one run in the fourth, and that was it for the Hawkeyes. Iowa just five hits today. Uh, Will Christofferson gets the loss. Jared Hart gets the win. Elijah Dale gets the save for Illinois State. The Redbirds uh, with five runs, five hits. They played clean baseball defensively. The Hawkeyes, three runs, five hits, one error in the field. It was the middle of the order that did the damage for the Hawkeyes. Everybody else was just a little bit off tonight. Seegers, Huxdorf, DeRiggi, each 0 for 4. Anthony was 2 for 4. Tello, 1 for 4. Peterson, 1 for 3. Honar, 1 for 4. Nobody had any hits in the bottom of the order. Uh, just mustering five hits against this Illinois State staff is uh, was a problem today for the Hawkeyes. Could not get it done. We'll be joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland in just a moment. We'll take a break. We'll come back and hear from him. Illinois State stuns Iowa 5-3 to three in this one. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great. 
But they're not always great for us, because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Illinois State gets this one 5-3. to three. Joined now by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, it just feels like one that got away from us tonight. Yeah, we got what we deserved, honestly. I mean, we didn't play very well. Um, you know, we it was uphill for us offensively most of the night. Certainly want to credit their, their arms. I know the numbers from those guys don't look good, but Jared Hart was a kid who was pitching on Friday for him last year. Sinisco was a weekend guy. They just weren't off to good starts. They both pitched really well, and, and you know, we didn't make things off, you know, that tough on them offensively. But, but even then, we still kind of did enough to be in a position to win. We don't cover first and a bunt. We're walking guys, you know, we're hitting guys. We're just, we didn't play clean. And again, we kind of got what we deserved and, and um, that's unfortunate, but you know, it's one of those days where um, you're certainly going to look back on this one and, and, and feel like you, you let one slip away. It, did it have an uneasy feeling in the dugout as the game went along uh, towards the late innings? Like, man, we're letting them hang around. We just can't get that extra base hit or that insurance. A little, just but you thought you had Will and, and Louie towards the end, and you have a 3-2 lead. You know, I think Kate, Kate comes in, gets out of a dirty inning, was really good. But then, unfortunately, the next inning we lead off with an error. Then we hit a guy 0-2. You know, Hendu does a good job coming in, limiting that damage, but it ends up 3-2. Um, we really just couldn't do much offensively, uh, you know, throughout the whole game. Sam had the, you know, the big two-run homer, uh, Honar, and then Petey had the big two-out hit, and that was really it. We didn't make life hard. You know, the last two innings before the ninth, it was a seven-pitch inning and a nine-pitch inning. And, you know, it was just one of those days. And, you know, you look back at it and, you know, you end up having two days off, um, you know, as we look back on it, probably maybe that wasn't the best decision. Maybe we need to try to do, you know, Monday's a normal day off, but with the doubleheader Saturday, we gave them Sunday. And Monday's a little messy with classes and stuff like that, um, you know, but we weren't sharp. We weren't sharp in a lot of different ways. And certainly as a coach, you think back to that part, you know, maybe we, we should have should have uh, not given them the extra day um, there. But, you know, I, I don't want to take anything away from Illinois State. Those guys both threw really well. Um, but, man, we just we just didn't play well. We didn't play clean. We had survived some of this, you know, during during the first part of the, the year. And, and, you know, again, 11, 12 free bases. You know, you just can't continually do that and expect to survive. And, and it caught up to us tonight. And, you know, we talk about, you know, those the margins, right? The season is in the margins. You kind of you're going to have a bunch of games where you win. You win easily. You're going to have some games where you don't win easily. And the margin games are who makes the least amount of mistakes. And, and they had four free bases. We had 11. We don't cover on a bunt. So we give them an extra out. I mean, that's the stuff that kills you. And, you know, sometimes when you run those coverages during practice, everybody's just like, oh, here's a bunt coverage again. And it's just like, listen, when these are, when these are being run, the game is on the line. And the worst thing that can happen in those situations is you don't get an out. And we didn't get an out, and that made that inning awfully difficult. And, and you know, from there, uh, it just kind of snowballed a little bit. So, unfortunate. we got to learn from it. Um, we have two good days of practice coming up here, and we certainly got a big weekend coming up uh, with Maryland. Yeah, just a couple things before we let you go. Do you, you think that message starts to get home with the guys now just when it comes to that clean baseball? And then secondly, do you, do you view this as <laughs> uh, this is going to be a pretty inspired team come the weekend, right? Well, I mean, you hope so. You just, you know, again, you, you're not immune to these types of things throughout the year. Um, you just can't let them fester, right? You just got to wake up tomorrow with it's a new day and we got to get better. And, and again, we talk about that every single every single time we get together. It's if you're not getting better, you're not you're, you're getting worse. And that's the really way we view it. And, um, you know, we got to certainly clean things up that that happened tonight and learn from what what went down and um, 
you know, that's all you can do. And it, it's a long season. And again, you're you're just not going to be immune to this stuff. It doesn't taste good when it happens, but um, you got to be ready to go the next day and, and get better. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for your time, and uh, really looking forward to that game on Friday now. Absolutely. Thanks, John. Associate Head Coach Marty Sutherland on our post-game show from Normal, Illinois tonight. Illinois State, they get this one 5-3. to three. We'll be back with post-game coverage and highlights right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great. But they're not always great for us, because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Iowa Falls in the midweek at Illinois State. The Redbirds win it 5-3 with three runs in the eighth inning. And by that time, Iowa was out of time. Couldn't get it done. Illinois State wins it 5-3. Let's go over some of the highlights from tonight's game. First pitch to Honar. Drives this deep to left center. It's carrying well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Sam Honar. Home run. Boom. Two balls and a strike. The pitch from Anthony. This one's drilled deep center. Huxdorf going back, still running. He's at the track, and he leaps. He's got it. He caught it at the wall. Two down. Huxdorf got it at the wall. The 3-1. Ground ball to Seegers at short. He gloves it. He flips it to Honar. Got him at second. Yes. Sinisco looks in for the sign, doesn't even check Tello at second. Here's one down the line and left. It is fair ball to the wall. Tello's going to score. Petey with an RBI double. Hawks lead 3-0. Yes. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Ground ball to Seegers. It's short. He throws it home. It is accurate. Moss picked it out at home. Yes. Got him. Those are some of the highlights from tonight's game. Iowa losing to Illinois State, 5-3. to three. The Hawkeyes now 19-4 and four on the season, and here come the Maryland Terrapins projected to win the Big Ten. I'm going to guess that the Hawkeyes will be extra inspired uh, to get that, seat, that series underway when we are at uh, Dwayne Banks on Friday. First pitch is set for 3.30 on Friday afternoon in Iowa City. Our pregame coverage will begin at 3. Really looking forward to that one. Going to have a little bit of a bad taste in our mouth when we leave normal Illinois tonight. Illinois State wins it 5-3. to three. For my great board op down in Jefferson City, Michael, thank you tonight, Michael. Great job as always. I'm John Leo saying so long from Normal, Illinois, where Illinois State wins it 5-3. Hey, every day's still a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.